Kelly and his group, but a great season that uh, they need to be saluted for. You know, people were saying, this is an awful big game, Coach. He said, no, a big game is yeah, to have here. to beat BYU right. to get here. And yeah. that, there's nothing more true than that. I always get upset when people say only the champions deserve any credit. This team is a good football team. There's the team that can wear those caps, though, because they have won it 41 to 13. Our congratulations to both teams. New Mexico for their fine year. Colorado State for a sensational second half. They win it 41-13. For Gary Danielson and Dean Blevins, I'm Brad Nessler. Don't forget, Nebraska and Texas A&M is coming up next. You're watching ABC. Capture the feeling. Capture the style. Capture the love and the light of a diamond. The Gold Collections by John Atencio. You want sports? Tony Zarell is your man. Catch him on 7 News. Colorado State, the winner in the WAC, they're likely headed to the Holiday Bowl as the champions out of the WAC. Up next, the Big 12 championship game. Nothing's happened. They've just kicked off. Let's join Brent Musburger. Well, we welcome the rest of you to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. I'm Brent Musburger with Dan Bouts and Jack Aroot. You missed one series of three and out for Texas A&M. And now Nebraska with Scott Frost at the controls. Their first series of the game. Great field position, too, for Nebraska, but that's their norm. McAvicka and Green, the option look, and Frost, late pitch to Amon Green, who steps out of bounds, and we take a look at our Dr. Pepper. Nebraska offense today, Frost the quarterback. Amon Green has rushed for 19 touchdowns, and, of course, he's got an excellent blocking core of receivers. The one thing about Nebraska receivers, they will block downfield. And there is Aaron Taylor, All-American center a year ago and an All-American guard this season. Bobby Newcomb on the field as a wide receiver. The option in that direction, and Frost again pitches out to Green, and he pounds to the 46-yard line. Warwick Holdman of this A&M defense made the stop. This is an undersized defensive line. Brad Crowley going to have to play very big today. The linebackers, that win, three straight years leading the Aggies in tackles. And Shun Horn coming off a monster game, 13 tackles against the Horns a week ago. Third down and one. The toss to Green. Looks for the hole. He's hit, but I believe he reached out for the first down. The spot will determine it. Crowley makes the stop for the Aggies. You know, Brent, I think he's going to come up about six inches short. In fact, the officials are already uh, giving the fourth down signal. Here it comes at us, and Crowley, number 45, gets penetration there on Makovica, dives and makes a fantastic tackle on Amon Green. And they are going to go. Tom Osborne did not hesitate. The ball at the Aggies, just shy of the Aggies' 45-yard line. Carpenter and Jackson will give him a couple of tight ends. They'll ask for the official measurement. They just have so many weapons to, to use to That's pick up first that down. Yeah, it is a first down. You bet the nose of the football was right there. And a great move by Tom Osborne to insist on the measurement. The officials were going to give him a fourth down. Scott Frost. A thousand yards rushing, a thousand yards passing. First Nebraska quarterback to ever accomplish that. Eyes the defense. Play with Green. They pull the left side of the line. And Green to the 44-yard line for a couple of yards. That win. What a sensational career he's enjoying at Texas A&M. He's averaging 10 and a half tackles per game in his career. And he does it on hustle. And great speed. He gets up in the hole there. Just follow him. Jump over the blocker and bring down Green. 
Matt Davison, the freshman, stretched wide to the right. Nebraska runs to the short side, and nothing doing for Green. He's hit by three Aggies right at the line of scrimmage. Zarek Rollins, the defensive end out of Houston. Marcus Hurd, the nose man from right here in San Antonio, in on that stop. Well, when you have three guys that are as productive as these guys, it's uh, this is the reason why Nebraska leads the nation in scoring. They lead the nation in rushing and in total offense. Third down and eight. Four wideouts and a shotgun look here for Frost. His first pass of the game, left side, diving reception for a first down at the 31-yard line. He hits the freshman Davison. That's only the second pass that Davison has caught since the miracle at Missouri. Scott Frost showing a real good uh, discipline in the pocket here. Sees a real nice lane there and throws between two defensive backs to pick up that 12-yard gain. But Davison, he's the folk hero, isn't he? He really is. Newcomb stays in the game. The ball is at the Aggies 31-yard line. In the round, Newcomb cutting back to the left. He's got an alley frost. Throws a beautiful block. Oh, what a cursing block by the quarterback. And Newcomb is out of bounds at the six-yard line. Wait till you see the replay of Scott Frost. And the first thing, though, is this, this is an illegal block on number 51, Philip Myers, right here by McAvick, right in the back. That should have been called, but there's that crushing block by the quarterback, Scott Frost. Remember, he's 225 pounds, and he is big and strong. He took out defensive back Sean Horn, and he leveled him over on that far side. First and goal. The power look, and now Frost cuts back, and he goes for the end zone in the game's first touchdown. Frost is determined to demonstrate that he's not a third-string all-conference quarterback. He's much better than that. Eighteen times he's done this on the ground for Scott Frost. The fake to Leggett with McAvick out in front. The Aggies go flying out for the pitch man. And this is what makes Frost so dangerous. He can pull tacklers on his way. Brown pounds the extra point perfectly. First series of the game for Tom Osborne. And they send up the red warning flags. This is not Texas all over again. We are determined to get a shot at a title this year. We'll be right back. We come here on a glorious quest. A search for that which can be found nowhere else. Where, in the trenches where mighty men clash, amidst the echoes of glory's past, high atop Olympus. Oh, this is our quest. This is what football is all about. Now all I can do is play that nacho guy. Hey, Max. Why just sit around when you could have fun in the new Ford CX-2? to run to, baby. Nowhere to hide. Everywhere I go, the face I see. Every step I take, you take with me. Nowhere to run to, baby. Nowhere to hide. The new Ford CX-2. Grab life by the wheel. Max? Nowhere to hide. <laughs> Trailers for sale or rent Rooms to let 50 cents I'm a man of means By no means King of the road Two hours of push and broom Buys an eight, twelve, four bedroom I'm a man of means By no means King of the road Heisman hopeful Peyton Manning in Tennessee tackle the Auburn Tigers in the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Next. Scott Frost scores the touchdown, but we want to go back and show you the block which set it up, Dan. Well, here's Shun Horn right here. This will play could have been called right there, the illegal block, but now watch Frost from the left side of the screen 
destroy the defensive back. You just don't see that every day. Did you ever throw a block like that in the NFL, buddy? <laughs> huh? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, not in college, not in high, uh, high school, grade school. <laughs> with nowhere to start. He's an athlete, folks. They should have a special spot on the first team here at the Big 12 this year. Dante Hall can bring this one out to the goal line. 15. That's back to the 22 yard line. Check in with Jack Aru. Jack. Brent, this team of Nebraska Huskers has been lusting for this day for 12 consecutive months. Now, we've covered a lot of Nebraska games, but after that upset loss to Texas last year, they came into the championship game, the inaugural one, very, very flat. The same cannot be said today. They have been animated. They've been pounding on each other's shoulders. And in fact, Jason Peter and some of the captains went around before the game and said, remember, full intensity, 100% right from the get-go. So far, so good. Yeah, I noticed yesterday, Jack, they came out in helmets to practice. It was a far more orderly practice than a year ago in St. Louis. Dante Hall, the running back, and Stewart will show the shotgun work this time. Deflected, incomplete. Spiller coming up on the ball after it was deflected, but uh, he was about half a yard shy of making a deflection reception. Jason Peter and Grant Wistrom are used to winning football games, but they're also used to winning national titles. Here's Wistrom, and there's Peter jumping up and making the deflection, but they are, are providing the senior leadership. They're not going to allow these younger kids on the team to not to be entirely focused on winning this game and then winning the next game and then seeing what the pollsters think. That's Sir Parker as A&M goes empty in that backfield. He's a very good receiver along with the running back. Stewart looks long and they try to get him down on that far sideline incomplete. Double covered. McFarlane and Warfield with coverage for the Cornhuskers. Not a chance and Stewart wisely aired it out out of bounds. The guy that put the big pressure on the quarterback was Chad Kelsey. The other defensive end uh, opposite Grant Wistrom. And so far, the 0 for 3 start for Brandon Stewart, basically because he just hasn't had time to uh, set his feet and throw the ball. It's third and 10 for the Aggies. It's a slot to the right. So the all out passing game certainly hasn't worked. They'll come back with the inside game with Parker to the 24 yard line. And Jay Foreman, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. This is where, where Shane Leckler, the punter for the Aggies, has really got to come through because if Nebraska continues to have good field position, they won't feel threatened at all. They will just get into their normal offense and march on down the field again. Newcomb ready. Osborne talking to his quarterback as he gets ready for his next series. And Leckler wails on this one. Newcomb from the 21-yard line. 30. Sprints to the left. He's dangerous. Tries to cut back down to the right. Gave up a couple of yards. Not a wise final move. And he is now at the 34. The one thing RC told me yesterday that most concerned him. He said, this is like a fight. We don't want to get knocked down too many times early. We can't stand that against these guys. They've got to hang on now, and we'll be right back. Turn it up. Love to pump. Slam dunk. In my Got a big man on your holiday list? One who needs to travel great distances with confidence? Well, Napa has everything you need, including this rugged 10-piece screwdriver set with free multifunction pocket tool, only $11.99. And speaking of traveling, who needs Rudolph when you can light things up with this portable halogen spotlight with 12-volt cigarette lighter plug, just $14.99? Only at the Ho Ho Holiday Sale, going on now at Napa. Yeah, so what are we going to do tomorrow? Saturday! 
the new redesigned Ford Ranger, the only compact pickup built Ford Tough. ABC Sports presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Ranch Hand Filet. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. And Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? San Antonio, great setting for this Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Next spring, of course, they will host the NCAA's Final Four down here. This will be a great city for the Final Four. First and ten for the Huskers, up by a touchdown. Frost brings the option to the wide side, puts it into Green's hands, and Green with an alley out to the 49-yard line. And Nebraska just using sheer muscle right now. Sean Horn makes the tackle. See Scott Frost come down the line of scrimmage and not even look where Amon Green was. Just uh, very patiently flick the ball out there. They've done it so many times in game conditions, but also in practice. Great relationship that they keep in the backfield allows Frost to pitch the ball blind. The two freshmen, Newcomb and Davison, on the field as wideouts for the Huskers. First down, just shy of the 50 yard line. Here comes Green with that fake to Newcomb, and he keeps it around the left side this time, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. A gain of six yards. Rich Cody, the strong safety. His daddy once played for the Chicago Bears, gets him out on that far side. Well, that's how dangerous Newcomb is. You've got to account for him on the field. They have used the end around, and they have faked it. And this time, it's going to be the fake. And, and watch the influence. It's a good fake, too. little ball fake there by Green. He just rolls around the corner very patiently behind Eric Anderson and picks up a nice six yard game. Second and four for the Huskers as a result. Mine Green slashes through to the 40 for a first down and a reminder more action being brought your way by Dr. Pepper. Tonight it is the SEC championship game presented by the good bottler Tennessee and Auburn. Dan do you have any feeling about uh, Tennessee and Auburn tonight in Atlanta. Well I think that uh, this is really going to be the uh, showcase game for Peyton Manning if he is going to have one. This is a good time for it because there are a lot of people that are doubting he is the Heisman Trophy candidate. This may wind up being a showcase afternoon for the Cornhuskers and Frost is going to pull it back out off the option. Good on sideline. Newcomb got it. 15 yard line. Out of bounds. First down again. What a career Newcomb who's only a freshman has in front of him at Lincoln. A 26 yard gain on a reception. What do you do with this young man. Remember ladies and gentlemen he is an outstanding quarterback prospect. But he can do more than just play quarterback. Uh, we've seen him on the reverse when he gained 25 yards. We've seen him on punt returns. But this is what he does best. Wide receiver only seven catches on the year. Seen Nebraska several times this year, but I have never seen them any more focused than they are right now. Stepping back on the inside with Joel McAvicka for a yard. Jack Root. Well, Brent, one of the reasons why Newcomb is playing is all the coaches realized early on that this young freshman was truly a great athlete. They said that kind of athleticism has to get out on the field. Scott Frost is our quarterback. So they converted him over. He still takes a few snaps now and again as a quarterback. And he says, come spring, I want a chance to play quarterback. Tom Osborne's a little noncommittal. He says, well, I'll make that decision come spring. You know, one thing, Jack and Brent, is that we've seen him on one reverse. We've seen him fake the reverse. Watch for him to throw a pass on a reverse. Second and nine from the shotgun inside shovel pass to Amon Green, who's inside the 10-yard line. Down at about the 8-yard line. That'll leave them with third and short. Crowley, the defender for the Aggies. This is that inverted shovel pass or option, however you want to call it. The key man right here is John Z Zadiska. Watch as he leads Green up the hole with the block on the linebacker and another big positive gain for the Cornhuskers. Third and three. Line up with Makovica in front of Amon Green. Amon running so smoothly. Makovica straight ahead and Amon Green and Frost working to the right side. He Frost is down at the 10 yard line. Holdman. Makes fine defensive play for the Aggies that time. Couldn't have come at a better time, too, because that will force the field goal. 
And that's got to be a moral victory for the Aggies right now. Good penetration by the Aggies. They really bottled up the quarterback here. This was a run all the way by Frost and great defense by the Aggies. Chris Brown enjoying another banner season. He's 14 of 17 kicking field goals along with 46. That came last week up in Boulder against Colorado. So he nails number 15 of the season. He's 15 of 18 on the 27 yarder to make it 10 to nothing. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship being led by Nebraska. And a reminder of what's coming up prime time Monday evening. Hugh Downs will take you on a special trip at 8 Eastern. Tales from the Tomb, the Lost Sons of the Pharaoh. And that precedes the Panthers and the Cowboys on ABC's Monday Night Football. Believe it or not, as much as they're struggling, the boys are still in pursuit of a playoff spot. I guess, Dan, no one wants to win the NFC East this year, huh, partner? Well, I know the Redskins are going to be in tough, losing uh, Terry Allen and, and uh, their quarterback, Gus Farratt. It's good to see that uh, Farratt uh, recovered, though, from banging his head against the wall, <laughs> only to break his hip the next week against... Uh, Dick Vermeil's team, huh? Yeah, that was uh, that was tough. He was being chased down from behind, and uh, unfortunately they lose him because of that injury. Our buddy Dick Vermeil, of course, he was broadcasting this game a year ago when uh, John Makovic made the, what a difference a year makes. Here's Vermeil coaching the Rams, and Makovic has been ousted at Texas and replaced by Mac Brown. Isn't it amazing what can happen in 12 months? So I guess uh, Dan Fouts and Mac Brown made out pretty good, huh? <laughs> that day all. Now let this go down. He'll take a knee. It'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line and we ship it to New York and the John Saunders. John? Brent, time for the Burger King update. Quite a game in the WAC championship game. Kevin McDougal was outstanding. Takes the pitch here. They're actually just trying to run out the clock at this point. He takes off 66 yards for the touchdown. Had 255 yards on the day to go with three touchdowns as Colorado State heads to the Holiday Bowl, a 41-13 winner. Brent? John, what a job Sonny Lubick has done with Colorado State. Sir Parker, the running back here for Texas A&M. Maybe they'll go back and try the muscle game. Here's Parker cut off. Nothing doing this time. That aggressive black shirt attack. Mike Brown, the rover number 21 out of Scottsdale, Arizona, all over the running back. Talk about a bad start for your offense. They've run seven plays now for the Aggies. And they have lost two yards in those seven plays. Gives you an idea. They face now second down and 12. Coach McBride, the defensive coordinator, the longtime defensive coordinator, stability on the Nebraska staff. One of the reasons why they succeed. And Stewart with a fake goes downfield incomplete. And again, Warfield. Had the man extremely well covered at the sideline. There was no daylight there for Stewart. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, after the Aggie defense came off, R.C. Slocum was the first to meet them. He went to the corners, and specifically Horn and Webster, and discussed with them some of their coverage on the offense against, against this potent Nebraska team. They were more down than R.C. Slocum was. Slocum went to them and said, look, you held him to a field goal. Now we'll build from there. And they'll try to build here with a third and 12. Mark Broyles checks in as a protector from Stewart. They'll give him the shotgun and hope that the offensive line and Broyles can hold out the rushman. They double team Wistrom with Broyles, throw downfield, incomplete. A diving attempt on the near side by Matt Bumgardner, one of their sophomore receivers, and it was not to be. You got to make that play, though, if you're going to have any chance against a great football team like Nebraska. Stewart throws, a, throws his ball perfectly, and Bumgardner is going to lay out for it, but not bring it in. He gets behind the defensive back, and maybe, just maybe, Ralph Brown got a little piece of the receiver. Not a first down yet for the Aggie offense, and Leckler backed up inside the five. Newcomb drifts back. Didn't give him two yards. Here comes the flag. He going to get more than that. 35 40, 45 50. Look out. Newcomb to the 
36 yard line after he was mauled on the catch. Oh, is this young man exciting? That's a 40 yard return on a 57 yard punt. And you can't say that Leckler outkicked his coverage because number 27, Jeff Wilson, was there. With the opportunity to make a fair catch, the two yard buffer zone was violated against the kicking team. The penalty is declined. First down. There's Wilson in that buffer zone. Man, that's a great catch. The guy was hanging on him when the punt is coming down. And then watch this athletic ability by Bobby Newcomb as he brings it back 40. One of several great freshmen on this Nebraska team. We'll be right back. At Ford Motor Company, we're experimenting with a backing up warning system, which sends a signal to help you avoid hitting what you can't even see. Sometimes, you just have to go backwards to go forward. Ford, quality is job one. How do you get this equipment to these troops when there's a river between them? Build a bridge. Problem solving. You need it now in college. Learn it now in the Army Reserve. In a perfect world, golf balls would taste more like gumballs. In the real world, Diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. It's the taste you've been looking for. Husky, the toughest name in tools. Guaranteed forever. Available at the Home Depot. Just hold this and you know you're going to get a close shave. Remington introduces the new shave in shaving. The angle to the face, just right. Can't believe I'm in love with an electric. But look at this shave. Remington's new dual microscreen, built to shave incredibly close. And they guarantee it. You are looking live at downtown San Antonio, Texas, site of this year's Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. And uh, Jack Root, a lot of ways to follow the action here today. Boy, Brent, you're looking live. Well, you can get live with ABC's College Football Online. They're live from all of today's championship games. The key word in America Online is ABC Sports. And you know what? You can talk to a sideline announcer, Jack Root, at halftime. Wait a minute. That's me. Well, there's a young man you can track on the computer. Bobby Newcomb, Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was born in Sierra Leone, Africa. The option, here comes Frost. He's going to keep it. Big game, 20, 15, cut left. Down at the 10-yard line from behind. Jason Webster perhaps saved a touchdown after a 26-yard run by Scott Frost. You know, the one thing the Aggies have done well all year is they prevented big plays by the opposing offense. Great blocking everywhere. Lake on the outside, Makovic on the inside, and Frost running like a halfback. Another big one of those chunk plays for Nebraska. Davison, the other freshman wideout receiver, is off to the right for Frost. Becca straight ahead for a yard. We've mentioned Davison and Newcomb and how many talented freshmen are on this Nebraska team. This is as good a collection of freshmen as we've seen. Each of these youngsters have contributed in some way, Dan, to the success this year of the Cornhuskers. It's, it's amazing. Even on special teams, young man like Vanden Bosch down there, and he'll be a starter in that defensive line someday. You know, one thing Tom Osborne says, you know, people think we have a seniority system here at Nebraska that you earn your way. Uh-uh. We play the best athletes, and that graphic is testimony to that. And he has some of the finest athletes in the country. Second down, and nine, and now here's Frost. Here's that pitch. He tries to square up and get downfield, north and south, and nothing doing that time. Good defense. Yeah, that's good defense. Two plays in a row now for the Aggies. And remember the last time Nebraska was down here, they came up with that big stop on third down that forced the field goal. So they are playing good defense, but it's kind of late in the drive. Good job by Cody, though, making Frost pitch. 
and then Webster there is in there for the the tackle on Amon Green. Hands full for Mike today. One time player with the Wolverines, Shevin Wiggins. The field is a wide out, that option look, but Amon's in front of him, and Frost is going down, scrambled his way to about the eight yard line, and the Aggies force another field goal attempt. So the Aggie defense has to hope that the offense comes alive because what this team needs some first downs just to keep the ball away from the Nebraska offense. That was Bradley making the play from his linebacking spot for the coach. And, and Mike Hankowitz said that they their schedule has prepared them for uh, this option. I'm not sure it's prepared them for the athletes that are running this option but they are certainly doing well in the red zone. 26 yard field goal attempt. Ted Retzlaff the holder. And Chris pulls this one through. Two field goals, one touchdown. They've scored each time they've handled the ball, but that little nod of the head there would indicate that Coach Osborne is wishing for touchdowns and not field goals. You all know how that can go in a football game. Their average start uh, for their drives has been their own 48-yard line, and that's the one thing that RC wanted to force Nebraska to do is go 80 yards and uh, perhaps uh, have a turnover somewhere along the line. Alamo Dome, the site of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Drew Esikoff, the director, Jimmy Ressler, the producer, and a crew that we want to thank for great coverage all season long. Cameramen, audio folks, they don't do it any better than this crew right here. R.C. Slocum now on that far side, and he desperately needs some offense to help A&M climb back in this one. Here's Coach Osborne. He even looks more focused, doesn't he? Got that Before the stare. game, Dan, when you were down on the field and I was up here watching when he came out on the field, he went through the entire group of Huskers. He spoke to each player down there as they were loosening up, had a few words of encouragement, shook hands, patted them on the back, but he made it a point to speak to each player. They're allowed to bring 66 on the road to this game. Fields it at the four yard line is Hall again. And he is down just short of the 20 yard line. Well, we'll watch that black shirt defense going to work again against Brandon Stewart. And this AM offense needs to jump to life here. He's a young man whose confidence has improved, but uh, he'll be a little bit shaky if he doesn't get that first completion pretty soon. And it's up to the offensive coordinator, Steve Marshall, to give him something that uh, will build that confidence. Just a short pass, maybe just a swing pass, anything to get that goose egg off the board. Yeah, he's got Aggies break the huddle. Four down linemen, Dante Hall the running back. The Huskers show blitz on the outside. Good block. Warfield comes up. Warfield is playing more aggressively than I've seen him at any time this season. Yeah, I know that pleases Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator for the Huskers, because he was a little concerned with Warfield being a senior. He should be the vocal leader out there. Today, I think uh, Warfield is leading with his actions. Not pleased with what happened late against Colorado. Now that did not help Texas A&M either in this game, did it? No, that certainly got uh, the Cornhuskers focused in a big hurry. But the uh, Buffaloes back in that one. Second and nine. Foreman blitzing, picked up, and then they come late, and it's picked off. Pressure on the quarterback. Interception at the 16-yard line as Ralph Brown, the cornerback, the sophomore from Hacienda Heights, California, gives the Huskers another scoring opportunity. And this is against a quarterback who's only thrown two all year. 126 straight attempts without an interception. But Brown just right in the middle of the field there, reading the pattern, picked him off easily. This is the scenario that AM feared the most. Now it's first down and 10. Nebraska up by 13 points. Still in the first quarter. Amon Green stopped. And the 
run defense for the Aggies here has been outstanding. That's that win. He's the young man who has led this team in tackles for three straight years. His family, of course, I'm sure many of you are aware of that story, immigrating over here from Vietnam. They got out before the fall of Saigon. And uh, the young man, really a role model and just a great football player. Undersized, perhaps, but uh, his heart's bigger than most. They fake. Dropped. Vershawn Jackson out of Omaha, the tight end, wide open all alone. He drops the ball. You know, and Tom Osborne draws up all these plays, and all he can ask is that his players execute them. It's good fake, good uh, protection for Frost, good throw by Frost. No catch by Jackson, but you can hardly blame him. He's only caught four all year. This is the 12th game of the year. Coach pats him on the back as he comes over to the sideline. Third and 12, and it'll be the shotgun look for Frost. It's plenty of time. He's going to swing it out to Green, short of the first down, and it's another field goal opportunity. Coming up for Nebraska, Sean Horn makes the stop for the Aggies. Just a little bit of frustration being shown on the face of Scott Frost, but when you've got a field goal kicker like Chris Brown, he's about to, uh, he's kicked 14 consecutive field goals for Nebraska to set a new school record. This is almost automatic for him. 31 yard. 31 yard attempt. Retzlaff the holder. Such smooth form as he puts another one through. Almost automatic for Coach Osborne of the Huskers this year. And that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter. And our presentation of the uh, Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship continues after this message and a word from our ABC station, Nebraska 16. This is the Triton-powered Ford F-150, and this is a 102,000-pound earth mover. Now, that's what we call taking the bulldozer by the horns. Ford F-Series, built Ford tough. Pumpkin, you are so cute, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Honey, look how cute. <laughs> Honey, wait a minute. I think he's gonna say something. Say hi to Dada. Say hi, Dada. Come on, zoom in. Zoom in, I think he's gonna say it. Zoom in. Hey, say hi to Dada. Say hi, Dada. Oh, Daddy, you paid too much for that camcorder. Come to Circuit City. You can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. State Farm presents Rules of the Game. We're talking about defensive pass interference. In this play, the defender makes no effort to play the ball before he contacts the receiver. What's the call? America has always had a love affair with cars. And since 1922, we've been there whenever you've needed us. That's why we're America's favorite auto insurer. And as we celebrate a 75th year, we, the agents and employees of State Farm, would just like to say thanks for being there, too. We're talking about defensive pass interference. In this play, the defender makes no attempt to play the ball and contacts the receiver. 15-yard penalty. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're watching ABC. <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> I guess he never really was that interested in girls. Probably because he couldn't take his mind off those hamburgers. So when Leonard met Sonia, I knew she was my only hope. I bet a real woman could talk you out of that burger. Better be a real big woman. It's beefy, it's beautiful, it's the new Good Times Mighty Deluxe Cheeseburger with double cheese and a whole mess of other stuff. Only at Good Times. You want one, don't you? 
Pam Dale, 7 News at 10 tonight. Real life, real news. For Scott Frost on the left, it's the lucky seven coming early. For Brandon Stewart on the right, he's crapping out with the number seven right now. And hoping that something positive happens here in the second quarter as Nebraska dominates Texas A&M and leads our Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship 16-0. Brown continuing to bury those kickoffs back in the end zone, and it'll come out now on the 20-yard line. Dan, have you seen anything about Brandon Stewart? Can they do anything? You said throw a high percentage pass. He tried that the last time, and it was intercepted. Well, I tell you one thing. The, the, the biggest thing right now for Brandon is to realize, hey, we got three quarters of this ball game to play. No sweat. We're on our 20-yard line now. Don't worry about things that have already happened, guys. Let's worry about this play and this series. Let's get a first down. Remember, they trailed Oklahoma State by 15 in the fourth quarter and pulled it out. So Hardeman, Tiki Hardeman, is in there with Parker. We're going to show the eye and see what happens here with Parker as he slashes on a cutback behind the left side. And you want to see some lopsided numbers, Dan. Here they are. And, and, and AM is just lucky. It's just 16 to nothing. And I guess we are too. Because this could get real ugly in a hurry when you look at this. And AM is a very good offense. Three, their three rushers have gained over 2,000 yards. Not today, so far. Second and eight. down by three of the black shirts which is the nickname for the Nebraska defense and we send you down to check in with Jack Aru. Well Brent you were talking about that Oklahoma State game before that game A&M engaged in what we call revolving quarterbacks they shuffled them and shared the role between McCowan and Stewart because last year when Stewart came out they said well maybe there's too much pressure on him and he didn't really do too well so they wanted him to learn and get better. But they said that Oklahoma State game, R.C. Slocum did, was the turnaround for Brandon Stewart. Right now, he needs another kind of turnaround to get his rhythm, as you said, Dan Fouts. And the R.C. Slocum needs to get a first down. Third down and six. Aggies haven't had a first down in this game yet. High reaching grab. That's short of the first down. Chris Taylor making the catch and uh, he was defended by Erwin Sweeney another of the fine freshmen he starts at one of the corners for Nebraska and so it's three and out again and I'm not sure I understand the pass pattern there by Chris Taylor it was about a, a five yard hitch pattern when he needed eight to ten to pick up the first down you want to throw those hook patterns where the receiver will catch the ball already at the first down yardage busy man the punter and Newcomb stands back on his own 26 yard line he could give Nebraska a good field position again fair catch by one of the short men and that's Lance Brown they put two players on the wing and nuke them back deep that's a familiar formation for Nebraska San Antonio side of the Alamo you know who Texas A&M feels like right now we'll be right back When you think you know where the new Dodge is headed, they turn things around on you. Introducing Durango, a whole new kind of roomy, powerful, versatile sport utility. As you can see, the new Dodge is covering new ground. Some of which seems to be covering me. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. <laughs> Hope my car gets fixed today. <laughs> <laughs> and my sink. <laughs> and my furnace. <laughs> <laughs> and my lawnmower. What? You idiot. You're gonna get us caught. 
For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Eddie! Make it a Bud Light. In this jungle, the only thing wilder than the animals who roam free is the man who calls it home. The Jungle Book, ABC Sunday at 7, 6 Central. Number 12, Bobby Newcomb. Six feet, 185 pounds, freshman from Albuquerque. He has done it all. Here he is on the end around, rushing for 25 yards. Caught a pass for 26 yards. One of his punt returns, shake and bake, and loose for a 40-yard return. All-purpose yards for Newcomb, 106. Take a look at himself up there. <laughs> he was, wasn't he? And that big screen up there, and that's good. Yeah, you bet it's good. That's <laughs> great. What a day he's having also. Scott Frost, the trigger man. Mon Green, big hole, left side. Flowers to the 42-yard line, and that's a gain of six yards on first down before Webster makes the stop. You know, we talk about Amon Green and Scott Frost and Joel McAvicka, but uh, Newcomb, as we've seen, has been the star so far today, and he really is the missing ingredient in this offense, a uh, big play wide receiver that can stretch the defense and make the uh, running game that much more effective. Second and four. Green. He's the eye back. On the toss to the short side, number 30 squares it up and smashes for the first down. Mon Green, one of the finalists for the Doak Walker Award. Enjoying a very quiet great season and watch that win look for number 30. And watch the block here by Joel McAvicka. And that sends win all the way over on the cartwheel. He's lucky he didn't get hurt seriously on that one. But that's the type of effort that that win gives you play after play. Totally fearless. First and 10 for the Huskers. Their own 49 yard line. Up 16 and Frost going to throw it downfield in the middle. Got a man tight in at the 25 yard line. Make it Jeff Lake. They split in. Number 89 for 26 yards on that pass play. And Scott Frost can afford to smile with his offensive lineman Matt Hoskins there. This is only Jeff Lake's fourth catch of the year for only 14 yards but uh, he didn't come to Nebraska to catch passes he came to block. He built like a tight end. Yes he, he is 6'4", 220. First and 10 from the 25 there's the option Frost going to keep it now a late pitch Amon Green's gone. Touchdowns he reached for the corner did he get it. He may have been out at the one may not have got the pylon as he was going out of bounds down at the one Sean Horn the corner on him but you know somebody something hit the pylon and if it's the ball it's a touchdown because the pylon is across the goal line great pitch by Frost and great effort by Green here and a pretty good tackle knocked the official out of the way got the pylon but his knee I believe brushed out of bounds as he hit it let's see what they're deciding here no they have changed it the official who had the call it is a touchdown Brent but the official that was closest never saw it I guarantee Absolutely. you that. Absolutely. Brown adds the extra point for the Cornhuskers. You know it's all working your favor when the quarterback can come down the line of scrimmage, gain five or six yards by himself, and then pitch it to his tailback, who can dive from about the four-yard line here and will break the Bad plane. Bad Basically with the point of the ball, though, Brent, I disagree with you. No, I watch this the leg. The watch the knee from that other angle. That leg is down, out of bounds. That knee is down right there. That is not a touchdown. Oh, well. Does anybody think they would have stopped them from the one? <laughs> not me, folks. 23 zip. We'll be right back. The new Dodge wanted to take the sport utility concept to a higher level. Enter the new Durango. 
It's best in class power, cargo space, and seating for up to eight raise the bar considerably. As do its strongest in class frame and its stable, longer, wider stance. Dodge Durango, a higher form of sport utility from top to bottom. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. Oh boy, this is my favorite scene. Ooh, scary. There she is. Get her, get her. Hey, keep it down. Excuse me, it's very difficult to enjoy a movie when you're talking and shushing at me. All the characters from the new movie Anastasia are now at Burger King. One cool toy just two fifty nine dollars with any value meal purchase. Your kids can collect all four. This part always gets me. Oh. Oh. Fortune 500 companies know that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Let's go. I have never seen a colleague this angry. I mean, Reveille is saying, what is going on here, partner? Well, Brent, you are absolutely right because Amon Green's knee is clearly out of bounds before that ball breaks the plane. But this official here, he really takes a tumble there. He was wiped out on the play. Dante Hall backed up in the end zone. And Green short of the 20, down at the 14 yard line. Jack Aru, what was going on with the officials down there on that play, partner? Well, Brent, during that commercial break, I had a chance to ask them what the situation was, and they said, remember that the goal line is like a plate of glass. That pylon creates an out of bounds, but it is part of that plate of glass. When the ball hit that plate of glass, they said, it's a touchdown. But they had to check with two other officials. Three officials said, yes, it's a touchdown. That's why it stayed. Well, we've got the advantage of super, super, super slow motion, folks, and that is no touchdown. The knee is down, out of bounds, but so be it. Here is Sir Parker. Stewart throws into the middle, and a foot race with Derek Spiller, the talented tight end. 35, Warfield with the angle, pushes him out of bounds at the 22-yard line. There is a first down. That's the first of the game. And it took a 63-yard pass play on Stewart's completion to his tight end, and maybe that will lift up the Aggies. And look at the speed for the tight end. Spiller goes about 240. He runs away from Jay Foreman there, but it's the speed of Eric Warfield that's going to force him out of bounds. Well, you talk about a play that a team needs. The question is, is it too late? A lot of time left, though. Stewart. At the line of scrimmage. Still 11 minutes here in the first half. Tiki Hardeman in as their running back along with Parker. Chad Kelsey, number 57, making the stop for Nebraska. And Jason Peter is coming off the sideline. He sat out one series defensively, and it is just possible. And you look at that expression on his face as he comes to the sideline, and it is possible that the spasms are starting to act up. He did not even suit up for practice yesterday. Second down and nine. And here's the toss. Parker, nifty, elusive runner going no place because number 21 rover Mike Brown all over him, and clearly there is a problem with Peter. I asked him what happened, whether it was injury in the Colorado game or what. And he said, Dan, he was in the weight room, and you know they have that chin-up bar, and, and they had him doing some pull-ups. And he said it came a couple weeks ago, and he, he stretched something in his back, and it just hasn't felt right ever since. And the amazing thing is, in that Colorado game, the Texas A&M coaches watched that tape and said, he has a bad back, we don't believe it. He was unblockable against the Buffaloes. Steve Warren replaces him in the defensive line. Stewart on a play fake gets no time at all. 
completed the pass to the 16 yard line but he was under enormous pressure that time from Kelsey the defensive end Peter not only didn't practice yesterday Brandon didn't practice at all during the week just some light jogging doesn't really look like they're going to need him today though this uh, job by Chad Kelsey he's been in on a number of plays here in the first half Kyle Bryant like his counterpart in Nebraska enjoying a good season this a 32 yard field goal trying to put the Aggies on the board here in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game and he does just that twenty three three Nebraska with the lead and tomorrow the season premiere of Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC Kansas and Maryland then at four Eastern stars of the PGA and the LPGA tours team up with the JC Penny Classic There's a long hitting duo huh? Laura Davies and John Daly they'll get it off the tee pretty good. Yeah, I would just have Jason Peter go to the locker room and just start the rehabilitation process right now. They got to think about that bowl game coming up and they need him to be healthy regardless of who their opponent is. Seven back back spasms, nothing but rest is going to make it any better. Great warrior. George Young the general manager who apparently is stepping out with the Giants to go into the league office at the end of this season a keen evaluator of talent thinks that Peter is going to be one of the first players picked in the uh, in the upcoming NFL draft his brother of course was picked up by the New York Giants he's been a backup as Jason I was doing he said Christian doing fine expect a little more playing time there have been some injuries in the Giants defensive line high short kickoff. Wiggins. 15, 20. Nice return to the 33 yard line. Peter is indeed going to go on inside here with 8.43 left in the first half. Jack Arute had him walk right past him. So our man is on the scene down there. And uh, Jack, Jason appeared to be in pain, didn't he? Yes, Brent, he's in a lot of pain. But one of the things about Jason Peters, he wants to go back out. So the doctors have decided they're going to take him back in the locker room and evaluate the condition. Because as Dan, as you said, they need him for the bowl game. Stopped at the 34-yard line. Good defensive play by linebacker Trent Driver, the senior from Cleveland, Texas. Amon Amon Green. What's your feeling about Amon Green, Dan? Driver. You've watched him a few games now. You know, the amazing thing for me, Brendan, here this guy has gained, uh, you know, about 1,700 yards. He's got 10 consecutive 100-yard games. The only game he didn't get 100 yards in, he got 99 and only played the first half of the Akron game. If he were on any other team but Nebraska, they'd be talking Heisman Trophy for Amon Green. Wide side. Eight pitch to Amon Green. Pushed out of bounds at the 48 yard line by Rich Cody. Well, there is the young man. His name, Jack Webb. You know, he didn't look nervous at all to me from Tulsa. There he is, huh? His baby there on the sideline. Lisa, mama, is right next to him. There's Lisa. My goodness, he got a possible million dollars at stake here on the Dr. Pepper Challenge, and uh, this is a nice day to be at the ballpark, huh? We'll see what he finally chooses. I'd like to see kickers relax, folks. Ross pulls out, fires back, wide open is Brown. Oh, he was all alone in the secondary. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Sean Horn, the defender. But you talk about somebody who was wide open. You know, besides running, Scott Frost has been extremely accurate today. That's 27 more yards for the Cornhusker quarterback, who is six of seven, and the seventh was dropped. Well, look at the time to throw, Brent. I think you could complete that one. Not so sure. Do you know that Scott Frost has not been sacked in the last four games? Easy to be accurate when you don't, don't have that pressure back there. Here's Amon. He's bottled up at the 
line of scrimmage coming across that time was Stephen Young, the nose man, number 90, just a freshman. We talked about the stability on the Nebraska coaching staff. Let's take a look at our Home Depot coaches fact. Now this is combined 152 years experience participated in 149 bowl games about to be 150. Green is out and Jay Sims checks in as the eye back for the Huskers. Frost rolls right wide open again. And there's Davis in the first one going down. At the 20 yard line to pick up a five on the pass play. Webster, the defender for the Aggies. And Amon Ross will watch from the sideline. Do you think he would be a first round draft choice, or do you think he'll wind up back in Lincoln next season? I asked Tom exactly that, and he said the, the thing that with Amon is he's having his dad handle all that type of thing so he can focus on this game and the bowl game. He expects to have a conversation with Amon after the ball game about his plans for next year. I think Tom wants him to come back, obviously, and I think Tom thinks he needs one more year of seasoning before he goes on to the NFL. His replacement, number 31, had a knee problem. He's wearing a heavy brace underneath. Back to back to the fullback, first down, and still battling his way. There's your former walk-on inside the 10-yard line. If you're looking for a blocking fullback in the NFL, one of those raftman type guys, folks, dial up number 45 in Lincoln. What a great, great fullback he is. But you know, Brandon, he, he's really not like a fullback when you see niftiness like this. Watch after the catch. Makes one guy miss there, skips inside another, jumps over one guy, and then as a true fullback will, he'll punish that tackler. The gate replaces him. Two fullbacks, power look this time. Sims, the pitch man, got it. So with both fullbacks, Sims carries on the option that time to the eight-yard line, and Rich Cody forced to make the play. Well, if there was ever a time for a turnover, and the Aggies have got a positive 16 in the turnover ratio, they need one now. They cannot afford to let Nebraska go in and score a touchdown here. Green returns. Sims back to the sideline. Frost is going to pull it out. Left side wide open but short of the end zone. That pass was a little bit high that time. And TJ DeBates went up to take it down. Had the pass been thrown a little bit lower, I think he would have made the end zone. I think you're right, Brent. The throw it does sail because uh, Philip Myers is in there. If he can make that catch without leaving his feet, then Shun Horn will not have any chance of stopping him. Coach Osborne, it is third down and goal. McAvicka is right behind Frost. Green up over the top. Touchdown, Nebraska. Possessions against Coach Slocum and the Aggies. This is the third touchdown. They've also kicked three field goals. They've scored every time they have touched the ball here in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Chris Brown adds the extra point. So Amon Green and the Huskers are holding up their end of the bargain. But remember down the road, no one but no one will become a bigger fan of Ryan Leaf of Washington State than the Huskers. We'll be right back. We surprised you with the largest interior in the class, the biggest engine available, a remarkably long wheelbase, and the steering feel of a sports sedan. And then, J.D. Power & Associates added one more surprise. They ranked Dakota most appealing compact pickup. Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. The 
taste you've been looking for. The University of Nebraska ranks number one in the nation for graduating academic All-Americans in football, women's volleyball, in fact, all sports put together. And our honors program attracts some of the country's highest scoring freshmen in fields like physics, computer science, biology, chemistry, and math. So you have an interesting known value for N. There is no place like Nebraska. Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ABC Sports. ABC Sports presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. The new Dodge, it's about change. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The Husker fans are here in force. A great traveling party. This is the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, and they hope to move on down to the Orange Bowl. Dante Hall will take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. Jack, what's coming out of the locker room about Jason Peter? Well, Brent, they finished the evaluation, and the medical people from Nebraska have determined that Jason Peter has re-injured his back, and they don't want to take a chance. Not that it could be a severe problem in the long term, but they don't want to take a chance for the bowl game. With this game, 30 to three, they've determined that Jason Peter should get in his civvies and watch the rest of it from the sidelines. That's exactly what Dan Fouts suggested. Finley and Harrison in that defensive backfield. Stewart on a play fake. First down, not much time, but he completes it. And he hit his tight end, Derek Spiller, with his second catch of the day. He's got 23 balls. He had their biggest game of the day. Dan Fouts, Jack Arute, I'm Brad Musburger. This is the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. The Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. He's talking to one of the fine executives from the Alamo Bowl down here, Bob Coleman, who lives here in San Antonio and uh, he believes that Purdue might wind up with a shot to come to the bowl game this year and that would be exciting to have him down here. Joe Taylor's done a great job with that team. The fullback Tiki Hardiman up the middle. Only his mother calls him by his first name of DeAndre. Everybody else refers to him simply as Tiki. I wonder what the Cornhuskers call him. They probably just say you're stopped. But it is a first down, and that's why we get the cheer from the Aggie fans. Second first down of the day. Not much to cheer about if you're an Aggie today. It is 30 to 3. Gives you an idea of how the Cornhuskers are dominating. Brandon Stewart in a drop off the screen underneath. And it was so well defended against Dante. That time there was just absolutely nothing doing. Steve Warren, who has replaced Jason Peter, number 96, rushing over to make the play. Not only are the Cornhuskers talented, but they are deep. Well, that's how why they can afford to tell Jason Peter to just uh, take the rest of the day off. Got a sophomore like Steve Warren to back up Peter, but also Mike Rucker, number 84, has had a, a great year backing up Chad Kelsey. A lot of backups in there. I saw Carlos Polk, a freshman. It was on the field. Stewart on a blitz. Complain. Oh my! The defender had slipped on the play, and Baumgartner let it get away. He was too wide open. Man, oh man, when it goes bad, it really, really goes bad for the Aggies. Brandon Harrison, a backup cornerback, number two, was covering Baumgartner. He goes out of bounds here. The ball is there right through the wickets. Is there anybody around him? No, the safety would have had a bit of an angle, but he was a long way away, Dan. I thought that it was touchdown and in. Third down and nine. Stewart runs hard to the right. And 
everybody's juggling the ball, aren't they? Finally, Chris Cole hangs on that time. You know, they're short of the first down, and they're going to punt. 0 for 6 now on uh, third down conversions. I, why not go for it here? You're down by 27 points. It's fourth down in about uh, two or three yards, but Slocum elects to kick the ball back to the Huskers. The Wiggins, Brown, and Newcomb back deep. Makes the fair catch at the 26 yard line. We'll take a break. Bumgarner knows he let one get away just a few moments ago. We'll be right back. Oh, oh, 24 yards. And so the prince entered the sleeping castle, breaking the spell as Hansel and Gretel came upon the evil witch's cottage. And Tinkerbell as helped rescue the lost boys from the pirates. And they all now you can buy children a lot of happy endings, because every time you use Visa, we'll contribute to Reading is Fundamental, dedicated to helping children learn to read. So please use your Visa card, because every child deserves a good beginning. Jack climbed down the beanstalk, narrowly Visa, escaped. it's everywhere you want to be. Husky, the toughest name in tools. Guaranteed forever. Available at the Home Depot. When you try Chili's Ranch and Filet, a beautifully carved eight ounce tenderloin, slow grilled to perfection and placed on awesome blossom strings. Served with skillet potato cakes and grilled veggies only at Chili's. Just hold this and you know you're gonna get a close shave. Remington introduces the new shape in shaving. The angle to the face, just right. I can't believe I'm in love with an electric. But look at this shave. Remington's new dual micro screen, built to shave incredibly close. And they guarantee it. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, a discussion of the Heisman Trophy. I've got my mind made up. Oh, I'm not vastly. I just want to let the fat lady sing. I'm very interested in what happens tonight. Vote's not due till Thursday. I'm going to wait and watch tonight. She hasn't sung yet, but she certainly is tuning <laughs> up. We're going to send you right now back to our game. Let's rejoin Brent Musburger. Brent. Hyping the Heisman. More than 50% of the votes are in. It's over. Peyton Manning has won it. What's in the second? Here comes for us to the wide side. Oh, a bad pitch on the ground. Devon Green's got it at the 19-yard line. Daylight for a moment, Dan, for the Aggies. Yeah, they're human after all. But that's one thing about Nebraska with this type of offense. They fumbled it 32 times this year, but they've only lost 13 of them. And I think that's because they, they have a lot of players around the ball at all times. And then when a, a pitch goes awry like this one, Amon Green's heads up enough and athletic enough to cover it and not lose it again. Four wideouts. Shotgun. See if the offensive line holds up. They have all day, and they're going to run the quarterback right out of the shotgun and look at Scott Frost. Beautifully conceived play, Dan. They simply spread the defense with the four wide receivers, and it just ran him on. Quarterback draw for 12 yards. And the bottom line is not good for Aggie fans today. We talked though about how focused Nebraska was coming in and you're right Brent their practice yesterday uh, there wasn't any horsing around as you usually have on the day before a game guys are loose and everything but uh, we're just wondering if old Jack Webb is going to go for that million dollar kick or that you know the $250,000 kick. Love to see how relaxed he is. It's uh, Frost. Got a man wide open is Davison. Got him. Davison wide open. 35 30 foot race now going to get tackled out of bounds at the 17 yard line caught by Rich Cody the safety and there's the miracle worker Davison except for that catch against Missouri the Cornhuskers wouldn't even have a shot at a national championship but they've got a glimmer just a glimmer of hope well this is 10 completions now for Scott Frost to seven different receivers but the amazing thing is it's another big play the A&M defense has not allowed a lot of big plays this year. In fact, they've only allowed one over 39 yards. Lucan was a slot man to the top of the screen. Under the short 
short side. They use that play so often. Mine green into the 10 yard line. We have talked about Davison and where he came from, and you have seen this play over and over again. Watch what Dan Fouts is going to tell you here. Well, there he is. Here's Wiggins up here. Frost is going to look this way to begin with. The pass goes here, but watch Davison go all the way across the field. Sure, they were lucky on this play, but they were also hustling Matt Davison with a dive. And here's Frost cuts back down at the one yard line, scrambling toward the goal line for still another touchdown here with 30 seconds still to go. There is Davison. He just remember what the coaches told him. It's not coming your side. Just hustle back toward the ball. And that's what he did on that fateful day. The timeout has been called by the Huskers here, leading at 30 to 3. Unstoppable. R.C. Slocum certainly knows what you're talking about. He hasn't been able to stop this man today. Let's take a break. Honey, are you sure this is what ABC meant when they said we'd be sharing the night with Drew Carey? Let's spoon! <laughs> Dharma and Greg and Drew Carey share Wednesdays on ABC. Wait, this doesn't leave much room for Ellen. ABC this Tuesday. You want to kill me, Mr. Egan? You got murder in you? Their biggest case ever. No, help me! Oh, God! Becomes a 90-minute oh. NYPD Blue event. Murder! 9.30, 8.30 Central. Viewer discretion advised. Well, championship Saturday is fast becoming a blowout Saturday, but there's still one to go. And, folks, this one can wind up being a dandy. It is the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Tennessee against Auburn. That's coming up next. You know, our friend John Saunders, he's, he voted for Moss. I mean, didn't he do that the second week of the season for the Heisman? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure Moss is even going to be in the top four. Uh, I, I <laughs> but they like invited him to New York, maybe. Huh? Well, well, that means they're huh? they invited four guys, so <laughs> I think he's going to be fourth. Hey, Ryan Leaf will get some votes. He might be third, do you think? And uh, some guy named Woodson might uh, get a few himself. We already said Woodson was finishing second. Frost coming down the line. In for the Nebraska touchdown. And maybe they ought to invite that kid. He certainly would be one of our candidates. I cannot believe that he's the third string quarterback in the Big 12. Watching what he's accomplished here this year. Second touchdown of the day. On the ground, 19 on the year for Scott Frost. An amazing year when you consider all the great rushing quarterbacks that Tom Osborne has had. Scott Frost may be the best, at least statistically he is. Chris Brown adds the extra point. But with Frost, and you go back to the Missouri game, remember, on the drive for the tying touchdown, he marched that team 65 yards without a timeout. And on the final seven seconds, he was throwing the ball into the end zone. He gave him a chance that day. And he's 10 out of 11 throwing the ball today for 176 yards. And I asked him yesterday, in fact, I went up and congratulated him on making third team all Big 12. Well, he loved that. Well, he said, you know, I just don't understand it. What do you have to do? I said, well, Scott, you just got to keep hanging those W's on people. He says, you know what, you're right. You know, you were talking about quarterbacks. What is Peyton throw for? 3,400 yards? Yeah. 32 touchdowns? Yeah. How many times has he... Now, Woodson's had a great year. He's the defensive player of the year. How many great plays has he made? 15? He's 16? made I don't know. Uh, a, a few, yeah. Yeah, okay. They've been on national TV, and he's got a lot of exposure I shouldn't be way. asking a quarterback this, but a quarterback handles the ball on every snap. Of course they're the most important play. Why am I telling you this? Uh, you kinda, already do that. Brent, it's kind of like a presidential election. <laughs> if you're going to... You know, win the White House, you got to carry the South. You're going to win the Heisman. <laughs> Peyton's already got the South. He had it back in July. <laughs> Made for a great argument, though. What a game Woodson had against uh, Ohio State. And uh, he'll face Brian Leaf in the Rose Bowl. That'll be coming up on New Year's Day. Yeah, and R.C. just scratching his head. It has been tough going against this man's team. 25 years, fastest man ever to 250 wins, and it has been really agonizing today for the Aggies. Yeah. 
Stewart will line it up in a shotgun. Final 30 seconds. Look at that heat. Sacked at the 10 yard line. Almost time. You'll have to make a decision on how far he's going to try it. How much money? Jack, what a great name. <laughs> They'll play the old Dragnet theme song when he goes out there. He's, no pardon? He's got to be hoping that he can just hit the net behind <laughs> the goalpost. <laughs> the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. A route so far. 37 to 3, Nebraska. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge are coming up. So let's send you to the big fella now. John, take it away. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. And Brent, all over Peyton Manning for the Heisman. <laughs> he said, I picked Randy Moss a few months ago. I did not pick Randy Moss, but my pick is in. You see things a little different. Well, I just think it's still wide open. I think it's still a race. This game tonight is a big game. But you know what? Scott Frost in the first half, yep. maybe we can write him in as the fifth guy to get invited to New York. Yeah, hard to believe he's not even <laughs> considered. Stick around. There's more coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. Come here on a glorious quest. We search for that which can be found nowhere else. Where, in the trenches where mighty men clash, amidst the echoes of glory's past, high atop Olympus. Oh, this is our quest. This is what football is all about. This is the day. Now all I gotta do is find that nacho guy. They give us heroes, they give us hope, they let us laugh and cry and fall in love. Movies touch us as few things can. Any technology that heightens the experience of watching movies at home makes life even more enjoyable. DVD video from Philips Magnavox. Technology for the heart, the spirit, and the imagination. There comes a time when you realize you've come about as far as you can on your own. And if you want your investments to go further, you're going to need someone with the expertise and the resources to help you go the distance. It's not an admission of failure. It's an admission of success. It's an acknowledgement of what you've got at stake here. That moment of truth when you say to yourself, OK, no more fun and games. Smith Barney, they make money the old fashioned way. They earn it. A truck's life is filled with slings and arrows, including the inevitable flying stones and unmanned shopping carts. So we designed Dodge Dakota with software that optimizes dent resistance. Life on the road may be a battle, but Dakota has superior armor. Dodge Dakota, it's full of surprises. Before I quit smoking, I asked my doctor, is Nicorette gum safe? And he said, to quit smoking? Of course Nicorette gum is safe. Smoking is not. People smoke to get nicotine, and they get carbon monoxide and tars, which are deadly. Smoking is the danger. Nicorette can be a big part of the solution. Nicorette lets you use nicotine when you need it to help you overcome your cravings. Don't hesitate for a second. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. You're watching ABC. Where once these ancient nameplates ruled, now each of them succumbs. For paradigms doth shift when something wicked this way comes. Introducing an automobile that outperforms the competition everywhere, including the bottom line, the faster, sleeker, meaner GS. See it now at Cooney Lexus and Stevenson Lexus. The Avalanche Alert with Mark Crawford. Sundays at 5.30 on 7 News. Valvoline Halftime 97. Brought to you by Valvoline. The number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. 
from our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Welcome back once again to Championship Saturday. Nebraska scored every time they touched the football. They are routing Texas A&M. Earlier heard today on Championship Saturday, the WAC Championship, Colorado State against New Mexico. And Kevin McDougal had a heck of a game. 42 yards on this touchdown run as Colorado State rolled. Yeah, McDougal, 255 yards and three touchdowns. This game was 10-10 at halftime. Graham Lee, quarterback for New Mexico, had to leave with a bad ankle. He played in the second half, but he was never the same. Yeah, McDougal, as you mentioned, 255 yards. Army against Navy, usually a great game. It was not on this day, and Chris McCoy was the reason why. One of his touchdowns in the game, he now has 20 rushing touchdowns on the season. That's a quarterback record. Total domination by the midshipmen, 454 yards of total offense, only 87 yards for Army today 39 7 the final there stick around when we come back Todd and I go nose to nose for the Heisman Trophy who's it gonna be will be Peyton Manning or Charles Woodson well it sure has been an interesting thing to talk about this season I think it's going right down to the wire all right we'll find out we'll find out who we like when we continue on ABC's college football Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. ASC Certified Master Mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil they use in their own cars is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the guys who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. People who know use Valvoline. Also from Valvoline, Xerox Antifreeze. Extreme protection for today's engines. Lighter yet stronger. More power from less space. More space from less size. A drag coefficient among the lowest in the world. There's more than a pattern emerging here. It's the world's first use of cyber synthesis, where vehicles are designed, built, and tested in the virtual world so they'll perform better in the real world. The new Durango and the new Intrepid. New vision from the new Dodge. There's a lot of things that set A&M apart from other universities. The quality of education that you get at Texas A&M. It has great resources, the traditions of A&M. The network that's out there of Aggies is just so vast. It's not only just a degree that I got from A&M. There's a great deal of responsibility that goes along with that. Responsibility to maintain the integrity and the high moral standards that an Aggie is supposed to have. Coming up following the Big 12 Championship, it's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Tennessee against Auburn, that one is coming up next. Now, Peyton Manning trying to impress some Heisman voters there. Let's start talking. Heisman, we are both voters. Right. I say after that Ohio State game, which is as close as any player has ever come to single-handedly winning a football game, Charles Woodson wins it and has won it already. I don't think so. I think it's still a race. I think 50% of the votes are in. The other 50% will be watching very closely what Peyton Manning does in the game tonight. I made up my mind, I don't expect to ever look back. I'm going to stay at the University of Tennessee. Yeah! From the day Peyton Manning announced he'd play his final season for the Volunteers, it has been almost a foregone conclusion that he would win the 1997 Heisman Trophy. In leading the Vols to a 10-1 record in their first ever SEC championship game, Manning completed better than 60% of his passes for over 3,400 yards and 32 touchdowns. Terrific numbers, but not the nation's very best. Washington State's Ryan Lee put up better numbers with over 3,600 yards and 33 touchdown passes, leading his Cougars to their first Rose Bowl appearance in 67 years. But the Heisman isn't one on stats alone, and Manning would still be the Heisman favorite if not for the late charge of Michigan's Charles Woodson. Primarily a cornerback, Woodson built support throughout the season with his spectacular defensive efforts, including seven interceptions. But can a defensive player win the Heisman? Pitts Hugh Green finished second 17 years ago, and that's still the best showing by a defensive player in Heisman history. How is Woodson different? He's not just a defensive player. He also excels on offense. As a receiver, Woodson averaged a team-best 21 yards per catch, but it was his dazzling performance of three weeks ago in his biggest game of the year that is evoking memories of past Heisman glory. It holds up there. Rodgers takes the ball at the 30. He's hit and got away. Back up field to the 35, to the 40. He's to the 45. As Rudy has some time. Now he scrambles away from one hit. Looks. Uncorks a deep one for the end zone. Thalen is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! Oh, my goodness. Hello. 
On November 22nd, Charles Woodson had what might be remembered as the defining moment in this season's Heisman race. Tonight, Peyton Manning on a similar stage can stake his final claim to the nation's top award. You know, I'm not wowed by mere numbers, but what does impress me is when guys play big in big ball games. Not only did Charles Woodson dominate the Ohio State game, he also played very well against Penn State and Michigan State. For Peyton Manning, he didn't have a great game against Florida. He did have a huge game against Georgia, and tonight the stage is set. I think if he has a solid game and the Volunteers win, he wins the trophy. So that's the one thing we do agree on. He has to have a very big game. Don't forget, next Saturday at 7.30 Eastern Time, ESPN's Heisman Show. Will it be Peyton Manning, Charles Woodson? And how about Ryan Leaf or Randy Moss? We'll find out next week. And coming up, Jack Webb gets his shot at a million dollars. Stick around. You can keep your car looking clean, but you've got to keep your engine clean, too. Newly formulated Valvoline DuraBlend motor oil is a synthetic blend that suspends the dirt, unburned fuel, and water that cause harmful deposits and reduces oil burn-off. DuraBlend protects vital engine parts, so your engine runs cleaner and better longer. It outperforms all leading conventional motor oils because a car can look great. But it's what's inside that counts. Valvoline DuraBlend. isn't what it used to be. As you continue to change, so can your life insurance needs. To help make sure your life insurance plan reflects where your life is headed, just call your State Farm agent. State Farm understands life. Valvoline Halftime 97, brought to you by Valvoline. The number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. You want to see where the real action is in a college football game? Well, look right here. The domain of the mighty coach. Oh, he's all over my guy. I want to see a popcorn trap on right. 50 yards of pacing room with a little left over to flail your arm. Hi, sir. You been doing much flailing? He doesn't do much flailing. 79, I need a head nod or something. You're just leaving me over here standing. Hey, let's hustle up there. Let's get that going. Let's get that going a little bit. That's what I want to see. Tuesday, their biggest case ever becomes a 90-minute NYPD Blue event. Murderer! 9.30, 30 Central, ABC Tuesday. ABC's College Football is online live. Follow the action from today's championship games all on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. Now on Thursday, Burger King Corporation and its National Franchise Association, along with the partners in the American Football Coaches Association, will announce the 97 Burger King Coaches Bowl All-America team, likely to include Tennessee's outstanding quarterback, Peyton Manning. The nation's leading rusher, Ricky Williams out of Texas. Two-way star, Charles Woodson of Michigan. And Ohio State big bruiser, big cat, Andy Katzenmoyer. The Burger King Corporation would like to congratulate the 97 All-America team, which will be announced on the 97 College Football Awards show this Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Time on ESPN. Big money on the line. Let's return to San Antonio and Brent Musburger. Here at halftime, Nebraska leading Texas A&M 37-3. Now it is time for our 97 Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship Pick Your Kick Challenge. Jack Webb, he's a 28-year-old computer services account representative from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He has his choice of three distances, from 25 yards for 50,000, from 30 yards for a quarter of a million dollars, and if he makes a 40-yarder, it's one million bucks. Jackaroo, what's he going to decide? Well, let's check and ask Jack ourselves. Jack, what have you chosen now? Where are you going for? The million, the quarter of a million, or the 50? Quarter of a million. Well, now, what about practice yesterday? How many times did you hit it? 50%. Well, good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Jack. Dan, the ball is on the tee at the 
20 yard line so this would be a 30 yarder you got to pull for it. Yeah but I don't like the colors he's wearing aren't those Aggie colors. <laughs> Is it long enough. Yes. Jack Webb the Tulsa toe. All right Lisa. Give him a big kiss. A quarter of a million bucks. Christmas to the web. You know, Brent, you really got to hand it to him. Here's 65,000 people here. And, uh, you know, he knew he couldn't make it from 40 for the million bucks. But he practiced yesterday. We were out there checking it out. The big question, does he have enough leg? He's right on the money and just over the bar for a quarter of a million. So I guess those Aggie colors were okay after all. All right. Yeah, and that's not with a square toe either. That, he's just wearing old tennis shoes there. That's a heck of a kick, Jack Webb. Jack Aroot, that was some performance by the young man from Oklahoma. Jack Webb is now joined down here with his wife, Lisa, and Jack killed up. And Jack, you have a very special presentation to make now to a new quarter of a millionaire. Uh -uh. Jack, congratulations, and on behalf of the Dr. Pepper Company and Dr. Pepper Bottlers all over the USA, thank you very much for participating in the Dr. Pepper Pick Your Kick Challenge and drinking Dr. Pepper, and enjoy this quarter of a million dollars. Jack, unbelievable. A great kick. Your wife Lisa's here, and you keep bringing out your daughter's picture. Is that the good luck talisman? That's the good luck. What went through your mind, though, when you saw that bar arching towards the crossbar? Keep going. Hey, lend me a couple of bucks, will you? No problem. <laughs> Brent? So congratulations to Jack Webb and Lisa and their daughter. 250000 from the Dr. Pepper Bottling Company. And after this message, some of you will get a local news break, and the rest of you are going to see John Saunders and Todd Blackledge back in New York. Our halftime score again. So far, it's all Nebraska here. 37-3 over Texas A&M. Jack Webb with as many points as the Aggies. Turn it up, love to pump, slam dunk. Outside. But inside, it's a whole different story. Because Duracell batteries outlast Energizer. And test after test proves it. Better make it the alkaline batteries proven to last longer in the devices you use most. Better make it Duracell. He left the woman he loved. Explorers are just so mysterious. To uncover a legend. Fine living stuff. He never imagined ah. he'd find himself in the greatest adventure of all. She don't even know what's out there. Soon enough, I will. National Geographic presents Aiden Quinn. Dr. Livingston, I presume? Yes. <laughs> Forbidden Territory. Stanley's Search for Livingston. ABC Sunday. Welcome back to Championship Saturday. John Saunders alongside Todd Blackledge, rather. We all know, remember the Alamo. Well, today it's remember the Alamo Dome, as this is a pacing. Nebraska is up 37 to 3. Let's check the other games, beginning with the WAC Championship, which started out as a close one. Then it was a route later. Moses Moreno pitches to Jamie Blake, who throws it to Derek Ewell. 18 yards on that touchdown. And how about the day Kevin McDougal had? Yeah, Kevin McDougal was the story here. He's going to take the pitch, running very hard, breaks a tackle, 66 yards for the touchdown. It was his third touchdown of the ball game. This game was 10-10 at halftime. Colorado outscored New Mexico 31 
to three in the second half on their way to a 41 to 13 win. Again, Kevin McDougal was a story, 255 yards rushing and the three scores. Now, Colorado State, with this ball game, they have clinched a berth in the Holiday Bowl where they will likely face Missouri unless Kansas State does not get into the alliance. There are also circumstances that could put Colorado State in the Cotton Bowl. The Insight.com Bowl, New Mexico gets to bid there a well-deserved payoff for Dennis Franchoni's team. First time since 1961 the Lobos will play in a bowl game. Army, Navy, always a great matchup, but not on this one. Chris McCoy would take over the game early. Punches this one in from a yard out. And then Tim Canada also had a big day. Three yards for a touchdown for him as Navy just routed Army today. Yeah, and Chris McCoy is really the story. He's the one true superstar in this ballgame. Canada scores here, but it was all Chris McCoy running this offense. He does know how to score touchdowns. That's the best thing that he does as a running quarterback. Chris McCoy, a huge game today as Navy routes Army 39-7. to Take a look at numbers for Chris McCoy, 37 carries, 205 yards. All right, stick around. We'll return after this word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC. <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> I guess he never really was that interested in girls. Probably because he couldn't take his mind off those hamburgers. So when Leonard met Sonia, I knew she was my only hope. I bet a real woman could talk you out of that burger. Better be a real big woman. It's beefy, it's beautiful, it's the new Good Times Mighty Deluxe Cheeseburger with double cheese and a whole mess of other stuff. Only at Good Times. You want one, don't you? She says next to you, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Not having rocks in your head, you head to Hyde Park in search of your girl's next best friend. At Hyde Park, you get the dazzling insight that diamonds are the cornerstone of your relationship. And you find yourself romantically rejoicing. Diamonds of a carat or more. For you, for now, forever, without spending an eternity. Hyde Park Jewelers. Like her, our gifts are precious. Tune in to Walker, Texas Ranger right here this weekend for the action. For the humor and friendship. They won't hesitate to kill you. For the suspense and the surprises. For the reason that... I just might need the backup. Walker, Texas Ranger, Saturday at 10.35, following 7 News at 10. Janine Abreu, 7 News at 10, tonight. Real life, real news. At the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, the sun is setting on the Texas A&M Aggies. They trail Nebraska 37-3 with Dan Fouts, I'm Brian Musburger. And uh, Dan, what did Tom Osborne say to you after the Colorado game, which they almost let get away a week ago? Well, he said the mood of the team was similar to when uh, the mood after the Missouri game. Well, Nebraska goes out and puts 77 points on Iowa State. And right now, they're uh, right on pace to put that many on A&M. And the real bad news for A&M, is that Nebraska gets the ball to start the second half. Kyle Bryant, the ball on the tee. As you can imagine, the numbers here, not just the score, they're all in favor. There's a penalty. Against the Aggies, everything still backing up on them. And uh, Jason Peter, this is the worst note for the Cornhuskers as they look ahead. And the bad back forced him out during the first half. And hopefully, he'll be back in shape for their bowl game. On the kicking team, kick out of bounds, ball will be put in play at the 35, first down. So here you can see the first half statistics, and uh, really not a ray of hope there, Dan, for the Aggies. Well, the Aggies are a team that's uh, averaging over 200 yards rushing a game, minus three here in the first half, and you really got to hand it to the black shirts of Nebraska. They're stopping everything. And they open up with two tight ends, two wide outs, and this one running back, Amon Green, who has wrestled down at the 36-yard line, the third member of our team, Jack Aru. Jack, did you uh, make that loan with Jack Webb, who made that uh, field goal halftime partner? Well, he said he wanted to write me a check, but Brent, I checked with R.C. Slocum, and surprisingly, you know what he was upset about in the first half? The lack of passing yardage. He felt that they didn't really capitalize on some passing that he feels is necessary. So he's not going to really change much. Tom Osborne, on the other hand, counseled his team about not letting up like they did against Colorado. 
Newcomb is Nebraska's slot receiver, the freshman toward the top of your screen, number 12. And they option the short side of the field. Migrate fumble. Aggies still loose. Rebobbled. Aggies signal that they've got it. They certainly had it the first time. Let's see if they have got it again. They dash off the field. The officials. Yep, the Aggies come up with that football. That's Philip Myers, number 51, at the bottom of the pile. Ripped the ball loose and really has given the Aggies the best possible start to this second half. Amon Green with the fumble. And give uh, credit to Toya Jones, number five, for ripping the ball loose from Green. And then it's really a mad scramble. Good hit by number five as Myers wraps it up. So Brandon Stewart and the Aggies with field position at the Cornhuskers 45 yard line. That's the good news. The bad news is they're down by 34, 37 to 3. They'll go with one running back. He's a good receiver. Sir Parker's number eight. But the offensive line has got a hole out in Nebraska. Play fake. Stewart on a throwback deflected, almost intercepted. Wistrom had jumped into that. Lane and he almost picked off that throw back to the short side and he could have been long gone. This is how good this fellow right here is. Check out Grant Wistrom after the play action fake. He sees the lineman coming out on this screen pass and if he picks this one off he might go all the way for a score. Another first round pick in the NFL draft number 98. Want to watch him he'll get down on the right side of the defensive line. Second and ten. Stewart in running for his life and throws incomplete. That's Chris Cole, the sophomore from Orange, Texas. Incomplete. The comparison of our two quarterbacks and uh, well might tell the story of this game. Scott Frost, ten of eleven, and the eleventh was dropped. Should have been caught. He's also rushed for forty yards, scored a couple of touchdowns, and the number's not nearly as good for Brandon. Sneak it a peek, were you at those numbers up on the screen, Scott? We caught you. <laughs> He's got to like them. They're beautiful. Third down and ten. From the pocket, deep and over through the wide receiver, Chris Taylor. Freshman number 42, and uh, not a well thrown ball. Been in situations like this, Fred, and, and you just don't know what to do. You roll out, you get a little time to throw, and the time you pick out a receiver, he's got two defensive backs standing right next to him. Rough afternoon for Brandon Stewart as they're now 0 for 7 on third down conversions. This game gives you an idea of just how good Corby Jones is up at Missouri with the job that they turned in on a home game. High punt. They're going to bluff this fair catch and let it bounce. Great punt inside the five yard line for Luckley. That's a beauty. Marked at the three yard line. Shows you why he's number three in the nation according to the NCAA statistics. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Your kids give you plenty to worry about. Your car shouldn't. That's why you need a Chevy Lumina. It'll go up to 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. So get a Lumina and relax. They'll grow out of it. You did, didn't you? And check out Lumina's resale value. Mark, if you're at the airport before my 8 o'clock flight, maybe we can talk. Otherwise, it's over. Come on. Come on. I'll start. That battery! No matter what my customers drive, they depend on AC Delco batteries. They last up to 30% longer. I'm sure they do. Just give me the generic equivalent. Okay. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Hey, guys. Need a smile? Call Domino's. Yes! 
Deep Dish does the trick. An inch thick with cheese baked to the edges. And now with three toppings, $8.99. Any second, $4.99. But we deliver more than great pizza. <laughs> At Domino's, we're delivering a million smiles a day. Tim shows out the ropes at a singles bar, but nobody expected this. I could always just drive you to work in the morning. <gasps> what kind of car do you got? A new home improvement, ABC Tuesday. It's all Nebraska at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. And a reminder, at the end of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of Each Team. And today, Chevrolet has awarded over $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Scott Frost and the Huskers coming out from inside the five. Nothing doing for Mon Green. Sharp tackle by you-know-who. Dat win. What a performer he has been through the years for Texas A&M. You know, the amazing thing, he's playing inside linebacker. He's six feet tall, maybe. He weighs 215 pounds, and he averages 10 tackles a game over three years. That's incredible. Four today. Osborne's offensive assistants decide to use a couple of tight ends and the freshman, Matt Davison. That's Davison in motion to the short side. They're going to play fake this one, and they're going to throw it out of the end zone. Over through the tight end at the 20-yard line. Third down at 11. Might not have made that call had it been a tight game. I think you're right, uh, Brent. I don't think Tom Osborne wants to be thrown out of his end zone in a tight game, but this is not a tight game. You know, AM had a, a real opportunity after the Amon Green fumble taking over at the 45-yard line, but going three and out. Perhaps now they can make a, a turnover and get it in the end zone. Looks like the only way they'll be able to score. Here's third and 11. Quarterback draw and Frost way short. So Nebraska punting out of its own end zone. Bernard and win again. Number nine is a dandy. Isn't he? And that tackle, I think, really uh, got Fro Scott Frost's attention. They really blasted him. Taking a lot of big hits this year. That was a nasty one from the blind side. Dante Hall back deep to return. Jesse pushes punt. Push watching that in line to make sure that he's standing in front of it. Left footed punt. Hall going to give Texas A&M good field position. Inside the 40 and free. 35, 30. Puts a shake and bake move on the punter. Down at the 17 yard line. Makes the touchdown saving tackle. And yeah, this is a great return. And the, the return was set up to the far side of the field. So that meant that Hall had to make a few Cornhuskers miss. But the one guy he wanted to make miss was perhaps the worst athlete out there, the punter. Jesse Cush. This is a great play by Cush, preventing the touchdown, but it looked like Hall was stumbling anyway. Now Stewart with field position inside the Huskers 20-yard line. Parker is his long running back. Wide open. He hit number 89, Danny Campbell, the other tight end, who's out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. To say that it's imperative for AM to score on this possession was, uh, it's obviously stating the obvious, but, uh, you know, Campbell is going to give it his all after the catch. Big tight end, strong guy. RC Slocum likes his two tight ends. They got to get this ball in the end zone. It's imperative the Aggies score the next four possessions, partner. <laughs> Second down and a four. This is Hardeman. He was the big, durable back doing the job against the Longhorns last week in an ugly, ugly rainstorm on a Texas A&M. That was a good job by the Aggies that day. Brian Shaw making the stop. And now they're back in third and three against this Husker defense of Coach McBride. And they have not had any uh, success on third down. 0 for 7 so far this afternoon. Let's see who makes the play here. Fires 
is high and battle in the end zone incomplete. Spiller comes up, but it's incomplete. Worth a second look. Man, I thought he caught it. Spiller is really arguing as if he did. A lot of times players will do that, but uh, check him out right here on the post pattern. Good protection for Stewart. This is a great catch, great effort by number 87 here. Nope, good call by the official. The ball was loose over his shoulder on the ground. Disappointing result for Spiller and the Aggies. Up over the top of the shoulder. So it is fourth down. And Stewart going out, and McCown is going to throw it. Incomplete. So trickery on the part of the Aggies fails. They line up the backup quarterback in the shotgun, and they send Stewart in motion out to the right. This is one of those plays that, that Dan Fouch used to draw up on the sandlots when he was when he was growing up when he was a young boy. Yeah, and, and it worked about as well on the sandlot, Brett. <laughs> and the defensive line makes the play again. McCown trying to go across the middle to one of his tight ends. But watch the effort here. There's the block pass there. And that might have been picked off by the defensive backs of Nebraska. McFarland deflected it for the Huskers. First down for Scott Frost. I've got a question about that play. Amon Green powers the 16. Now, because A&M had thrown out of the shotgun, several times today it couldn't be that different a look for them to have McCown throw it could it unless you just want Stewart out of the way here well Stewart is uh, right here here's McCown Stewart goes in motion here and uh, it doesn't fool anybody Nebraska doesn't react look, look at, at McFarland. McFarland right there and then watch the play by number 99 Jason Wilkes as he snuffs it but McFarland might have caught it anyway here's the toss to a mine stacked up and keeps on plowing out beyond the 20 yard line. Well McFarland recognized that another quarterback was standing back there in the tailback spot. It wasn't Parker. Wasn't Hall. Wasn't Hardiman. Going to bring out the chains and measure it. And there, the young man Warfield played himself a good football game for McBride. Now, here it is one more time. Stewart going in motion, but a real heads up play by Octavius McFarland as he recognizes where the quarterback wants to go with the pass, and Jason Wilkes with the deflection. But uh, twice now to start the second half, the Aggies uh, couldn't have had it better. They could recover a fumble on the 45-yard line, then get that great punt return by Dante Hall to give them good field position, but they do absolutely nothing with both opportunities. Frost and the Huskers ready to go. Needing inches. Easily. Well, if you want to think ahead to whom Tom Osborne and Nebraska would be playing down in the Orange Bowl, certainly if Tennessee is anywhere nearly impressive tonight and win in that game against Auburn, then it would seem rather obvious that they would stay ahead in the, in the ratings. But Tennessee needs to win, and they need to be fairly impressive about it because Florida State's closing in on their heels in that fourth spot in the polls and here on first down Frost with the option to the wide side he is the master of that pitch isn't he and uh, Mon Green out at the 26 yard line with Jason Webster right there. I'm on green hit by Jason Webster and I guess if uh, Tennessee makes it on down to the Orange Bowl then with that next pick Florida State could be heading for New Orleans and the Sugar Bowl with Bobby Bowden and uh, who knows they could be playing someone like Ohio State and have to wait and see how it all unfolds tomorrow. So Ron Green record setting season back to Vicar pounds ahead and this is going to leave Nebraska in a third down situation. They have not been moving the ball here in this half so far Dan against the Aggies. Joel 
Yeah, no, but they're still sitting on a 34 point lead. And one thing Jack Garou talked about is that he was concerned, uh, Tom Osborne was, about the Nebraska's focus coming out uh, with this big lead out of the locker room. It's just human nature for the ball players to see the score, to realize that they're performing extremely well, and they will have a letdown of some type. But the Aggies have not been able to take advantage of that. And on third down, Frost fires. Davison drops it. Nebraska must punt. Davison knows he should have caught it. Frost has thrown just a little bit behind him to the inside shoulder, but uh, obviously Scott Frost upset, as well he should be. The receiver gets open, the quarterback delivers the ball. They're not all going to be perfect. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of experience. A lot of one-handed <laughs> catches by guys like Jefferson and Joyner and Chandler and Winslow. Push going to punt again here, Dan, and let's see if Hall can get off another good return. High spiral. And he's forced to make the third catch because of the hang time on that punt. It's a 41 yarder and a good one. So the Aggies will be coming out from their own 31 yard line when we come back. Oh boy, this is my favorite scene. Ooh, scary. There she is. Get her. Get her. Hey, keep it down. Excuse me, it's very difficult to enjoy a movie when you're talking and shushing at me. All the characters from the new movie Anastasia are now at Burger King. One cool toy just two fifty nine dollars with any value meal purchase. Your kids can collect all four. This part always gets me. Oh. Oh. In a perfect world, your cooking would taste more like your mom's. Woohoo! In the real world, Diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. It's the taste you've been looking for. Give your handyman the VersaPak Combo Pack. Cordless tools that give him so much power, it just may be too much of a good thing. Get the Cordless Combo Pack. Powered by VersaPak, built by Black & Decker. ABC Sports presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Napa Auto Parts Stores, we keep America running. And Smith Barney, a member of the Travelers Group. Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. The Riverwalk in San Antonio, great city for this Big 12 championship game, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Of course, they will be bringing you the SEC title game out of Atlanta later tonight between Tennessee and Auburn. Terry Bowden trying to do his daddy, Bobby Bowden, a huge favor in that one. Downfield, long, overthrown, intercepted. Picked off at the 38-yard line by the deep man, the rover back, Mike Brown, was back there. He talked about him being the deep man. That's exactly where Mike Brown was on this play, Brent. Brandon Stewart trying to make something happen, give his uh, receiver a chance to make a big play. But when you got two defensive backs back there, that's usually going to be your result as Mike Brown gets just his second interception on the year. And I know one thing about R.C. He cannot believe that his offense is being totally shut down by Nebraska. A lot of other coaches around the Big 12, though, are not that surprised. On the option, short side, and Shevin Wiggins, the wingback, the ball carrier that time. That's his first carriage for me. You know, there is a story that did not receive much attention nationally. I don't know how much it got back in the Lincoln Omaha area, but a year ago, the week prior to that Texas game, remember they came out of a tough battle in some bad weather conditions. Nebraska did against Colorado at home. Several of the players came down with the flu, and not much was made of it. But this year, about 
eight weeks ago, Osborne ordered up flu shots for the entire team. And when I asked him about it yesterday, he said there was no question that the team was not healthy a year ago, but they are this season. I'm not offering any kind of an alibi over what happened last year. And but, they didn't uh, either, Brent. You know, to their credit, they said, hey, we came out flat. We weren't prepared. Texas made a great play on the fourth and short. And uh, they never mentioned anything about the fact that they went in less than 100% healthy. Well, it'll be interesting, Dan, to see uh, who they do draw down in the Orange Bowl. And again, it could be in Pro Players Stadium. That's where they'll play it. And that's on grass. And you want to always keep that in mind when you're talking about Nebraska. For whatever the reasons are, they are more effective and lethal on a carpet like this. The cuts are better. Frost keeps it hammered down at the 22 yard line. Now, if Nebraska goes on and wins the Orange Bowl, they would wind up 13 and 0. And that would be the first 13 and 0 school in history not to win the national championship. And of course, Coach Osborne, somewhat philosophical Cross about it, he said, well, if we could get together next year and have a national championship, why could we do it this year? And you know, it's a very, very good point because remember the Rose Bowl becomes part of the alliance next year. But he said it's much like being in Penn State's position of a couple of years ago. They went unbeaten after the Rose Bowl, played your Ducks, and uh, won that game with no chance to win the title, deflected pass and incomplete. And so it's just one of those fluky things uh, there's no way you can figure it out. It would be much better if uh, Michigan and Nebraska, of course, could get together and uh, play the game. I'd be all for it, Brent. You know, the thing about uh, Nebraska, this is a very impressive performance they're putting on today. If they were to go to the Orange Bowl and play a game similar to this one, and Michigan, even if Michigan wins, and if they're not as impressive, that's the bad thing is, is you got to win with style now. You, winning is just not good enough. I mean, you got to go out and you got to pour on the points and do it with uh, with great flair. Style points, it's like diving. <laughs> Third down and seven now. To the right, penalty flag is thrown. Diving attempt in the end zone. We have not had many penalties in this game. Roger Riley, the crack stats man all over it, knows how to hold up one finger, doesn't he, Dan? And I mean, I, he was really on that one. Does that mean there's been two penalties then, Roger? <laughs> Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still third down. Well, let's check in with John Saunders. John? Time for the Burger King update Army-Navy game, and it was Chris McCoy's day. Tosses this one 11 yards to LeBron Butts. 39-7 at that point for McCoy 74 yards through the air and a touchdown and 205 yards on the ground and three touchdowns Brent Mercy that game's always a lot closer than that John that's amazing a blowout either way the Army Navy game maybe was a heavy favorite though this year incomplete Newcomb the intended receiver that time Frost uh, dashing downfield I pass <laughs> Saying you should have cut in that direction or you should have thrown a yellow flag. I'm not sure which point he wanted to make down there. Well, last week against Colorado, Newcomb uh, had a brain cramp as he was running in the secondary and ran the wrong pattern. Would have been an easy touchdown for him. And I think Scott was talking to him again. Now, this is the pattern where you're supposed to go to the corner. Don't continue on to the post. But remember, he's just a true freshman. And what a talent. Here's Chris Brown to attempt the 44-yard field goal. Nailed it. Oh, she's got a strong leg. On top of everything else, Nebraska with a powerful kicking game. So Nebraska puts 40 on the board right now. So this is coming up Thursday night, the Home Depot College Football Awards Show. That's everything except the Heisman, as I remember, that's in there. All of the big awards. You can find out about the Doak Walker. I, I would think that Ricky Williams of Texas would have to be a leading candidate. He enjoyed a great year on a uh, on a bad team. Yeah, Certainly Amon Green, I don't want to take anything away from him. Curtis Enos, the great one at Penn State, also one of the finalists in that. Uh, don't think there's any question, ladies and gentlemen, about the Jim Thorpe. I think we can just send that award to Ann Arbor, Michigan, to a fellow by the name of Woodson up there who plays for the Wolverine going to get a workout from Ryan Leaf. Dan, you haven't seen Ryan in person, 
Ryan can take it downfield deep, okay? And I like his attitude, Brent. He plays the passing side of quarterback, very similar to the way Scott Frost plays the running type of quarterback. Uh, totally uh, uh, oblivious to the defense, fearless. Uh, and when you're a quarterback like Leaf, and he's got four or five receivers, that Woodson can't cover them all. That's right. And remember, Michigan did not play Purdue, I don't believe, this year. So they did not look at a wide-open passing attack like they're going to face out in Pasadena. Now, I don't know about the other side of the ball. I don't know about Coach Price's defense, if they can hold up against Michigan. And then, of course, you'll get a chance tonight to see the high-strutting Tennessee Volunteers. Peyton Manning, he came back for his senior season. He passed up the National Football League and Auburn with a pretty good quarterback by the name of Damian Craig. He's more of the all-around type athlete if you haven't seen him, and he can do a lot of dangerous things. That should be a dandy tonight at Atlanta. Tennessee and uh, Auburn. It doesn't get any better than the SEC when they start to play at the top of their game. I'm telling you, so there's some kind of football. Uh, Parker is the running back. He'll get the toss from Stewart. That's a nice block. And Doe for the uh, first down marker. Just missed it by about a half yard. Clint Finley, the Sir, freshman free safety, who's going to see a lot of playing Clint time in the years ahead for the Huskers, was there. Aggie fans say, hey, it's about time. Where's this been all day? Good blocking on the outside. Leroy Hodge gives uh, Parker the opportunity to get nine yards and almost ten. Isn't that something? If you ask Coach McBride, who's the best offensive player he played this year, it's got to be Corby Jones of what he did for Missouri on that side of the game. Absolutely. Uh, led the uh, Tigers. Put him in position to beat the mighty Cornhuskers. You know, I think part of the reason they fell is that a lot of the voters didn't realize how improved that Missouri team is under Coach Smith. That's a pretty good football team now. And, and they're very similar in style to Nebraska. I think Larry Smith kind of patterned its offense after uh, the Nebraska offense. A lot of power, big running backs, but also the ability with a very athletic quarterback in Corby Jones to run very effective option plays. Got a first down with a shotgun. That's their only first down on a third down in this game for the Aggies. That's how good the Nebraska defense has been, even without Jason Peter. Much of the game. He started to play, but was forced out by an injury. Pass is complete to Derek Spiller, the tight end, and a little bit shaken up on the play. Stewart's pass complete to Derek Spiller, tackle made by Eric Johnson. Six nineteen to go here in the third. A route. Not going to be a fourth quarter miracle in this one. Like the one that torched. The Huskers a year ago. Parker slashes through, breaks a tackle, and finally down at the 46-yard line. Let's go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, you mentioned about how well Nebraska was able to step up and fill the void left by Jason Peter. There's a reason for that. The great thing about the Nebraska program, not only about walk-ons, is they try to play as many people at home as possible. Consider the statistic. The last two home games against Oklahoma and Iowa State, they played over 100 players in each game. That's 34 more than they could bring to this game. That's amazing, isn't it? When you go in there and watch him, Jack, what do we have through the years? Side handoff out of the uh, shotgun to Sir Parker. And, and also, Brent, you, when you have a championship game, it gives you that extra week of practice. Then you go to the bowl game, you get those extra couple of weeks of practice. So the Nebraska program just uh, keeps rolling and rolling because they make these bowl games. They play for national championships. They have their pick of the uh, country as far as uh, recruiting fine young athletes. And they, they are allowed to play a lot of them and practice a lot of them. Great facility up there in Lincoln. Of course, they were one of the originators of the great weight room and weight training through the years. Still fires complete to Bumgarner who hung on. About a half yard. You know he's going to battle too. Yeah. Because he, you know, the poor kid dropped that ball at uh, where he was wide open in the second half. And look at the effort that uh, he puts forth on this play. Doesn't go out of bounds after the catch right here as he gets away from Harrison and then uh, about 12, 13, maybe 106 Huskers hit him. 
Here's third down and three. And Wistrom said he was pulled across. Let's see if the officials agree with that. Uh, he was pointing at Chris Ruman, left tackle for the Aggies. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Still third down. <laughs> you know what his nickname is, folks. Gotta be Digger. Done a good job. Kept this game moving along here. Here's number 76, Chris Ruman. Yeah, he's rocking back in his stance, and that's enough to send Wistrom on his way, almost like a starter's pistol. Third down and eight. Short of the first down. They've got to throw that ball deep enough for a first down on those third down plays, Dan. You know that. I just don't understand it unless uh, RC had already decided to go for it on fourth down and why not trailing by 37. But I always like to have my receivers go at least as far as the first down marker so that after they catch the ball they don't have to worry about turning around and trying to break a tackle and make the first down. Been a pretty good season for the Aggies. It's too bad it's coming to such an unfortunate ending. Appears to be right now anyway. So here's fourth down and wide open. They put it. There's a penalty flag down on the play. And there's another one. Ralph Brown upset over here on the corner. I think the first one's going to be uh, illegal procedure against the Aggies. Second one is a dead ball call. And this discussion is taking way, way too long. This is not that complicated a game. We have two dead ball fouls against the offense. False start, then a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. We'll penalize five and then 15. Now Derek Spiller, the harder after the catch. Here he is, bottom of the screen. He is wide open. Nobody covers him for Nebraska, but the whistle is blown because of the uh, illegal procedure. And now this is what gets Spiller the uh, unsportsmanlike penalty, throwing the ball at the safety, Mike Brown. Really frustrated. That type of day for anybody wearing the maroon. Obvious. Leckler. Oh, what a great punt. Oh, did he turn that one loose? Oh, Newcomb just lets it go on into the end zone. 67 yards on that punt, ladies and gentlemen. He wailed that pigskin, didn't he? And Nebraska's wailing the Aggies right now, too. Understand you got a bug problem. <laughs> Daddy! I want you to meet my friends. Dad, phone call. Who's the IOS? Sir, is this your son? Is this your dog? Your life is full of worries. Your car shouldn't be. Get a Chevy Lumina. It's reliable, comfortable, and it's one less thing to worry about. Sir, is this your house? Heck, Lumina can even save you a grand. Sir?
These days, it seems like everyone's getting into racing. So make a pit stop at your local Napa store. This Napa Gold Championship Edition die-cast truck, a detailed replica of the one driven by 96 Truck Series champ Ron Hornaday, is just $24.99 for a limited time. And the holidays are sure to run more smoothly when there's a shiny new battery in your sleigh. The Napa NASCAR Select Battery will make sure you get to all the places you promised to be for as low as $69.99. Only at the Ho-Ho Holiday Sale, going on now at Napa. Coming up following the Big 12 Championship, it's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Number three, Tennessee against number 11, Auburn. Earlier tonight, Peyton Manning and his squad arrived. Manning came back to school, looks to win the championship, and perhaps the Heisman. We'll find out later. Brent, back to you. All right, John, thank you very much. 43, Nebraska. I am a return to the Orange Bowl, but this time the stakes a little bit higher and Jason Peter hopes to be ready for that game forced out of this because of those back spasms but like the warrior he is he suited up and started this game and was forced out of it now his offensive teammates will take it on over using the fullback Makavica and that win making the stop Jack of we can't say enough about Scott Frost originally going to Stanford then coming back home to Nebraska and uh, stepping up as number one trying to replace the great Tommy Frazier huh well Brent also there's a different kind of st Scott Frost out on the field today at first I thought it might be as a payback to the fans that booed him in Lincoln but I'm beginning to think that maybe he's letting all the Big 12 coaches know that voted him third in the in, in the uh, all Big 12 Maybe he's trying to deliver a message to them today. There he is. Out to the 27-yard line. Yeah, but you know, Jack and Brent, uh, Scott Frost is 0 for 3 here in the second half. He's killing the, the Cornhuskers. <laughs> well, here's the kind of day that uh, the young man, Newcomb, enjoyed. <laughs> Running, catching, and returning. Star of the future and a decision to make as far as Tom Osborne and Newcomer are concerned. Does he become a quarterback or does he stay on the outside? Uh, like Coach says, we make that decision when we have to. And Frost made the decision for a first down. Keeps it to the 34-yard line. You know, Dan, when I think about the uh, the coaches voting here for Scott Frost, and again, in case you did not hear, the coaches voted for Frost on the option. The third All Big 12 quarterback the first one Corby Jones we've been talking about him the young man the transfer student at Kansas State I was looking at the numbers today and checking and and the young man at Kansas State has had a fine year and uh, so too certainly we know has Jones it's almost too bad that there wasn't a separate spot for Frost on the first team you know like Aslan you know and you can pencil him in down there, right? well you know Brent uh, when you look at here's that pass I was telling you about huh? Could, you know he had a wide receiver all alone down here. Davison was breaking free and apparently Newcomb didn't see him in time and pick him up. Davison was behind the safety man. Newcomb on the carry, there was a flag on the play at any rate. Yeah, Joel Makovica was uh, with the illegal block there as Newcomb was uh, making up his mind not to throw the pass. Disappointing me no end. Yeah. <laughs> we want to see him throw the ball, right? Well, you know, you talk about him being a quarterback. He still has to uh, beat out Frankie London. Here's the uh, block here in the back by Joel Makovica. That's the one that wasn't called in the first quarter. Remember that? But getting back to your point about uh, giving Scott Frost a, a position on the number one on the first team, Big 12, Tom Osborne said, you know, a lot of those other quarterbacks, Bishop and Jones, they had good years later. Scott Frost has been solid from the very first game and the real breakout game for, for Frost was his performance at Husky Stadium against the Washington Huskies that uh, really set the tone for his year. Inside. Shuffle pass off to Green down at the 32 yard line. And you know when you rush for a thousand yards and you pass for a thousand green. yards you're more productive for your offense than if you were to throw for 3,000 yards and not rush for any. I guess I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got you on that one, didn't I? Yeah. Don't, don't do the math on that Let one. Let me think about that one for a little bit. <laughs> Second down and uh, at 13. Ross going to put it up. 
Bowers, the fullback, and now Kavika battles for that first down. What great effort. Powers across midfield. Fumble. Put it down. Trying to get a few more yards. He fumbled on the play, and it goes over to the Aggies. He's almost his own worst enemy on this play because he just refuses to go down. He just wants to drill Aggies. There's one. Give me another one. There's another one. But the ball's ripped out by Dat Wynn and the recovery by Toya Jones. Another great play by Dat Wynn. That's about the only number that's even in it. From the shotgun, Brandon Stewart. Sets the screen. Dante dances to the 45 yard line. Good gain on first down of about seven yards that time, and the tackle by Joe Walker. The Aggies are going to be in good shape for the future. They get Hall back, they get Parker back, Stewart's back, Tiki Hardeman. Tight end Spiller will be back next year along with their receivers. Stewart fires high and complete. Aaron Oliver let it slip through. Stewart's pass incomplete intended for Aaron Oliver. Third down. Flag, but it looked close down there, didn't it? Brandon Harrison with the coverage for the Corn Huskers. Here he is, number two, bottom of the screen, working with Chris Taylor. And yeah, that's a nice play. Taylor should have made that catch, though. And I'm not sure I understand what the punting team's doing out here, unless. They fake this one and check out Chris Taylor at the bottom of the screen. Unless he throws it. You know, he's got a great arm, Leckler. Yes, he is. He's going to fire it up high. Somebody running under it. If they don't go for it, it's a pass incomplete on fourth down. That's a play they worked on this week. Lance Brown, realizing what it was, got over and batted it. This is a heck of a throw by Leckler and watch Brown, number 14, come over, make the play, and not interfere with Taylor. But the one thing on that play, though, is Leckler has to throw the ball higher in the air and let the receiver get down there under it and give him a chance to make the play. Even the trick plays are not working for the Aggies today. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. who know cars best, ASC Certified Master Mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil they use in their own cars is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the guys who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. People who know use Valvoline. Also from Valvoline, Xerox Antifreeze. Extreme protection for today's engines. Number three, Kansas is out to prove they're the best team in the nation. But first, they'll have to make soup out of the Maryland Terrapins. Sunday at 1.30 Eastern on ABC. 
Every day you have a choice of what to watch. And every day at 7 News, we work hard to be your choice for news and entertainment. We bring you more of the shows you want to see, keep you informed from early morning to late night, and take the time to find solutions to real-life problems. We thank you for making 7 News the second most watched station in Denver. That's two. But number two still isn't good enough. So you keep watching, and we'll keep working to be your number one choice. Stay tuned. Pam and Sue just bought new contact lenses. Pam went to America's Best. Sue went somewhere else. For $49.99, Pam got not one, but two six-packs of soft med disposables. Sue paid more for her brand. At America's Best, Pam's eye exam was included. Sue's exam cost $70 more. Two six-packs of contacts with exam, $49.99. Ought to call America's Best. Right, Sue? Call today to schedule your appointment. Locations in Aurora, Littleton, and Arvada. The Avalanche Alert with Mark Crawford, Sundays at 5.30 on 7 News. The fourth quarter of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. A runaway, Nebraska unbeaten, and stalking Michigan all over Texas A&M, 40-3 and trying to make a statement and head down to the Orange Bowl. And they hand off to Green, who battles his way across midfield on the first carry of the fourth quarter. And Dan Fouts, I'm Brent Musburger, the third member of our team here today, Jack Arut. And Jack, this has been a great city San Antonio has for this championship game. Ed, partner? Brent, it's been absolutely terrific. In fact, look, I got myself a little uh, souvenir of San Antonio. And the guy said what they need to do down here is what is the Mexican hat dance. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, I got one for <laughs> you <folks> too. <laughs> uh, happy feet of root, we call him, ladies and gentlemen. A little light in the loafers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said that, Jack. I didn't part it. There are the numbers Not now from the, from the third Trent quarter. Driver. This powerful Nebraska team against R.C. Slocum, the winningest coach in Texas A&M history, but he will not add to that total here today in San Antonio. Your numbers look like this, Dan. <laughs> what do you want me to check? This one? How about that one? Yeah, that's close. And then look at that. 223 yards rushing. They come in uh, averaging almost 400, so they're a little bit off their game. Where's John Makovic and James Brown when we need them? <laughs> <laughs> Not even that play would help, come to think of it. They're just totally relentless on offense. First down, they Nebraska. can hit you with the power, go outside, and Frost is having a big day as well. Want to make a prediction on the upcoming Tennessee-Auburn game? I like uh, Tennessee. I like Peyton Manning. I, I think that uh, he realizes that he can silence uh, people like John Saunders, you know, <laughs> those doubters. He feels that, uh, you know, good game tonight. Win that SEC championship and then have a shot at the national title. Frost going to pull it back out. One hopper for Brown and it's incomplete. Frost has been asked, you know, many times if he'd like to play Michigan. Uh, we'd love to play Michigan. Uh, we've seen them on TV. Uh, we've seen what they can do. We know what we could do. Um, we have a better running game than Ohio State. They ran the ball on them. Uh, you know, Michigan managed six points on offense against Ohio State. I think our, our defense is similar to Ohio State's and Michigan's, and uh, nobody this year has been able to stop our offense. A pity that we'll never find out. Second down and 10. Frost on the option. Here comes the mine. Is ahead for the first down. That was a powerful run with the defender hanging on. I'm on green on the carry, tackled by Rich Cody. Jack, what's your feeling about Michigan and Nebraska? Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, I don't really Nebraska. care about my feeling as much as what Nebraska fans feel. This is the hottest selling t shirt here today in the Alamo Dome. Check it out. They're going to root for Ryan Leaf and company in the Rose Bowl. Key word there temporary. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Uh, when you'll be facing somebody like that again. But... First and ten. Now Mon picking his way behind Anderson. 
Anderson and then he slams to the 31 yard line. When you think about any weakness that this Nebraska team may have it's in their secondary and remember today that secondary has played extremely well picking off Brandon Stewart twice and he had only thrown two interceptions all year. Dan the one thing that can get a team like Nebraska into difficulty is if you get ahead of them and you force Osborne to go to a passing game it is difficult sometimes for him to play an extreme game of catch up against a, a Tennessee or a Florida State or somebody like that. It certainly doesn't happen often. Uh, that's right. Second down and here's Frost busting free. First down for the Huskers. Jones bringing him down the safety. But you know I think that answer the, the answer to that question may lie in number 12 we've seen today Bobby Newcomb and his ability to make plays as a wide receiver for the Cornhuskers. We saw Tennessee UCLA began its great comeback in the second half and came up short against the Volunteers. How do you think Tennessee would match up against Nebraska if it comes to that. Well I kind of like Nebraska against anybody and I would love to see them play against Michigan. Stopped after a of about a yard. We've seen Nebraska three times this year. Uh, once was against Oklahoma when they absolutely blew away the Sooner 69 to 7. We saw him the next week against Missouri in that unforgettable game. But this performance uh, all up and down the line Nakavik has been uh, dominating for the uh, Big Red Machine. Nakavik has shaken up. Leg injury and he is uh, coming off here on the near side. There he is. Looks like he might have had a, uh, a right ankle sprain to begin with. He's got a, more tape on his right shoe than his left. The gate now the fullback. Second down and nine. Green still in. So Frost behind the gate's block breaks free. Reaches for another first down at the 10 yard line. You know, the thing about Frost is he's a big guy. You know, he's six foot three, weighs 220 pounds. And I think that people don't realize how fast he is and how quick he is. When he made his decision on that run, he just flew up through the hole and picked up a great game. First down outside the 10 yard line, so they could still pick up a first down going in this time. There's Amon Green slashing to the six yard line. Dan, I want to pick up on a conversation you and I had about Scott Frost last night. Uh, we were with our friend Bud Weiser and Jack Aroot, we should point out, but we were saying what a rugby player this young man would make. You know, he, he might think about going on down to Australia exactly. and uh, taking all his press clippings with him and giving rugby a shot because he obviously knows how to run the option which is a lot of the, the rugby game is but I think he'd be pretty good in those scrums too. Oh look about a hard nosed quarterback. You bet. He could play without a face mask. <laughs> the game of rugby. No equipment. And here's Frost running that option. There's that pitch to a mob bobble touchdown Nebraska. Doing it every which way here today. There'll be no miracle comeback by the Southern Division in this year's championship game. And the Nebraska fans are tossing oranges out on the field. Six yards out, and Amon Green makes no doubt about uh, breaking that plane of glass on the goal line that time. Next up, Pro Player Stadium. Bring on Tennessee or Florida State or anybody else. The Huskers will be there. Still unbeaten. Welcome to my world crisis. In a world where mass media controls everything, one man has gone too far. Outstanding. But he's got one small problem. Bond here. Would you please kill Mr. Bond? Was it something I said? Tomorrow never dies. Rated PG-13.
starts Friday, December 19th. Somewhere, some poor slob's punching a time clock. He don't know what he's missing. Wake up, come on, get up, son. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. Dan Wolf, champion bull rider. This is what he does. This is what he drives. Pretty nice life. Chevy S10, like a rock. Let's go! Vacation travelers know that when it comes to Let's renting go. a car, there's really only one place to go. National Let's Car go. Rental. Especially if you're going to the happiest place on Earth. Because as the official car rental company of Disneyland in Southern California, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. For a family vacation you'll never forget. So what are you waiting for? Let's go to Let's Disneyland go. with National Car Rental. Let's go! National Geographic presents Aiden Quinn. Dr. Livingston, I presume? Yes. Forbidden Territory. Stanley Search for Livingston, ABC Sunday. 11.13 to go, and time permitting, we'll have the thrifty car rental postgame report with John and Todd. They'll get you right up to the minute as we lead you into the Tennessee-Auburn game, the battle for the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Short kickoff this time. It'll be fielded at about the 12-yard line, and Taylor left return because that's where the kickoff was placed out to about the 26-yard line. Jack Aroot. Brent, there's one fellow that wishes he was on the sidelines today that calls the radio sidelines for Nebraska. Gary Java suffered a problem, a medical emergency, and he is not here today. Our best wishes go out to him. But guess who they got to replace him? Dan, you know him, Jerry Taggy. Yeah, I know him only too well back in 1971, <laughs> I think it was, Brent. My Ducks went into Lincoln and lost to Taggy's Huskers 34 to 7. And by the looks of this score, he did pretty good that day. First down and 10. Stewart wants to set the screen and almost picked off in the middle. Oh my. That was Tony Ortiz. Pretty good looking football player, number 37 is. Watch Ortiz. Get after it and uh, look at this. Now that's the early edition, huh? Hot off the press. Wow, wow. you, you get that first copy, yeah. but huh? You Nebraska get that. wins it. That's it. All you have to do is fill in the final score. There's a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> this was printed four days ago. 10 58. Oh. Downfield too hot. And it's third down. Stewart's pass incomplete at 10 and 4. So Brandon Harrison, a junior corner, been pretty active in that defensive backfield. Coach Mack used a lot of defensive players here today. Yeah, Jack was talking about how many they used uh, the last couple of uh, home wins. There's a reminder of what we got coming your way tomorrow night on the wonderful world of Disney, the Jungle Book, and then the National Geographic. We'll bring a special. That's on the network tomorrow night. This one will be flagged. Jack said that he used over 100 players against Oklahoma and Iowa State because they were playing at home. They could dress that many. It'd be interesting to find out if uh, Osborne's been able to play all 66 of his ball, players today. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. I know a couple of quarterbacks haven't seen the field. Frankie London and my favorite name, Monte Cristo. We see a uh, one of the young Aggies being forced off. Tough day at the office for RC. Still 11 minutes to go. Trailing 47 to 3. That was Michael Williams. That was being carted off. Escapes, fires high, almost picked off on the deflection. And there is a very late flag. I mean, the back judge threw that flag 10, 15 seconds after the completion of that play. Spiller was uh, complaining. They get the call. They might have just had those flags tucked a little bit too deep in their pockets. This was clearly pass interference. There's Spiller. There's the bump right there by Clint Finley. And the flags don't come out till 
Spiller argues. Stewart in the pocket. Fires for a first down. He put the ball in Chris Cole's hands. Report on Michael Williams for the sideline as concussion. So the young man finished for this game. And of course, uh, the Aggies will be headed on to a bowl game. They'll get a chance here to regroup in a few weeks and erase the memory of this one. It is interesting that these two teams have not played each other since 1988. That was the kickoff classic played in New Jersey. And all the other games were played up in Nebraska. In the series. This is the first time they've met down here in Texas. You could see the yellow come flying by at the uh, tail end of that. And there's the series standings, five and one. And uh, the victory by the Aggies, you got to go all the way back to the 50s when a fellow by the name of Bear Bryant was a head coach of a very tough bunch of survivors. From that training camp that he ran down there. They still tell stories about that. You can listen to Gene Stallings for hours. Talk about what Brian put those players through. Second down at 10. On the blitz. Down he goes at the 36 yard line. Tony Ortiz coming through. And Ortiz is one of those athletic youngsters that uh, has worked his way into the lineup and into the starting lineup because of athletic ability, speed. Ability to close on the passer and then finish him off. Three and a half sacks now for Ortiz on the year. Mac enjoying this one. His black shirt's doing well. Third down and 17 and still stopping and snorting and coming for more. Stewart does get it off. Diving reception but short of a first down. The clock continues to run. The catch was made at midfield by Bumgarner. And it's going to be about fourth and three here at the 943. The Aggies, of course, are going to go for this. And this is a very athletic catch. Great job by Bumgarner as he sees his quarterback in trouble. And then under pressure makes a nice catch. Sideline, another great catch. Out of bounds, right at the 20-yard line. Chris Cole makes this one. And this is the way the Aggies want to start the game, getting Chris Cole man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary because of ability to make plays like that. As he takes that away from number 25, Joe Walker. Beautiful catch by Chris Cole. And guess who's back? Number 98, Grant Wistrom returns. He's down at the right rush end, coming around the tackle, the handoff, and there he is making the stop at the 17-yard line. Yeah, he said enough is enough. He'll throw the bomb on fourth and short. I'm going to get back in the game and make some plays. Brown now returns. Many of the regulars were out. Mike Brown, the rover has come back in the game. Aaron Sweeney, the freshman corner, he's back in the game. Second down and eight. That was Wiston who broke across and said he was pulled again. Well, last time he was uh, pulled by Chris Ruman, and he's arguing that Ruman got him again this time. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Still second down. You know, Wistrom already holds the Nebraska record for the most tackles for losses, and it is this great start, that first step. Just a little flinch, too, and uh, he saw it and was in the backfield. And it makes it second down and 13. Why not some fun? Just watch 98 get off the ball. And they blitz from outside him. Passes underneath the Dante Hall slips a tackle. 15-yard line and out of bounds inside the 15. Still short of the first down. Sweeney with coverage. Now here's what Wistrom has to say about getting off the edge. When you're coming off the edge, the main objective is to get the offensive lineman to move his feet. Once you got the offensive lineman moving up here, moving up field, you can do a couple of different things. You can, if you got him beat to the outside, 
You can continue to the outside with the speed rush and just lean, dip your shoulder and lean and rip to the inside. Or after you've beat him up the field a couple times, you've used a couple speed rushes and he jumps outside, then just do a quick counter. You can club him, you can grab his jersey and throw. Third and three, touchdown Aggies. Wistrom is double teamed. He is nailed at the 20 yard line. Spiller caught the pass for the touchdown. But it was Mark Broyles who sealed up Wistrom. The fullback, Wistrom was coming off the edge that time. The tackle and the fullback did the job, and the Aggies with their first touchdown of the game. Clear throwing lane for Brandon Stewart. There's his tight end, and that's that running ability we talked about in Spiller. I get the feeling that Nebraska did not want to allow a touchdown in this game. That's why Wistrom and Warfield and Mike Brown were back in the lineup. Point for two. Stewart has to hurry. He's hit on the release, and it is incomplete. Hit from the blind side. He was in a foot race that time, and Steve Warren, who replaced the injured Jason Peter, runs him down. 47-9 the score. 8.25 to go, but the Aggies put a touchdown on the board. Today, at a station, it's got everything. I'd call it an adventure comedy. More like a comedy adventure. All right, all right. At Burger King, get your kids four cool toys from the new hit movie Anastasia for just $2.59 each when you buy any value meal. Great performance. Love, Love Remember. Hey, him. Anastasia Bartok Puka and the Runaway Train. Collect all four. Like I said, a real adventure comedy. Comedy adventure. This can only end in tears. Everybody's a critic. Anastasia Toys at Burger King. Only by going alone in silence can one get into the heart of the wilderness. All other travel is mere dust and hotels and baggage and chatter. comes a time when you realize you've come about as far as you can on your own. But if you want your investments to go further, you're going to need someone with the expertise and the resources to help you go the distance. It's not an admission of failure. It's an admission of success. It's an acknowledgement of what you've got at stake here. That moment of truth when you say to yourself, OK, no more fun and games. Smith Barney, they make money the old fashioned way. They earn it. A bright and shiny night in Atlanta for the SEC championship game between Auburn and Tennessee. The do-everything quarterback of the Auburn Tigers, Damian Craig, tying the last knot. Peyton Manning, the drop-back passer, the classic type. For Tennessee, he's ready to go. We've got a party coming up next in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, Keith, we hope that your party lasts a little bit longer than ours, partner. It's 47-9. Nebraska. Nebraska. The Huskers. Quarterback Frost. And been dominating here today. Watch for the onside kick now. Kyle Bryant. The high bounce. Picked up. Aggies have got it. Net win scoops it up and loving every moment of it. It's a great play by Dad Win, but the bounce is absolutely perfect by Kyle Bryant up in the air. Bobby Newcomb has got to charge that ball to make the play in the air, and you see Dad Win knows that you cannot advance a recovered onside kick. Although he returned one uh, for his team against a team that was kicking. The onside kick for a touchdown. So, pretty heads up play by Dat Win. Ball near midfield. Let's see if they can find Spiller again. They got him in the slot. Fires to the outside, man, complete. And suddenly, 
the AM receiving game. That's Leroy Hodge getting the job done. Jack Aroot. Hey, Brent, this is a guy called Little Red, and he's the newest mascot for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He was unveiled last year. And, hey, guess what? It's me. Oh, come on, Jack. You're kidding us. Who pretty catch, Jack? Huh? I don't believe it. Prove it. <laughs> First down and 10. Stewart. In the middle, fires for Spiller. Penalty flag against Nebraska. 15 yards, Ortiz, and an automatic first down. Stewart's pass intended for Derek Spiller. Incomplete flag on the play. They're going to get Ortiz for pass interference. It was another one of those late flags. Tom can't believe it. It sure looked like Ortiz. Had good coverage on the tight end that time. There they are, right here, hooked up. Well, I'm not sure that that's pass interference. The official must have seen the uh, right arm contact there, but he certainly didn't affect uh, Spiller's effort to the football. Is that the back judge again? Is through that? He betcha. First down. Stewart in trouble. Going down in a heap at the 35 yard line, Joe Walker. There's number 25, the freshman Rover. You won't see a safety blitz executed any better than that one. Joe Walker came in totally free. Now we will find out the truth. <laughs> we will find out if he really, you know, it was Jim. Look at what he will go to. You get on camera. Isn't that something? Stewart. Fires complete. So he just gone out of bounds. Instead, he kept battling for that first down. Bumgarner's been on fire ever since he dropped that one pass. That's a 20-yard gain for the young man. And that's the Aggie spirit. Never say die, regardless of the odds or the score. That's as good an effort as we've seen all day long. Check this one out. Right, Ralph Brown there, couldn't bring him down. On first down, Sir Parker. Cuts inside to the 10 yard line, and it'll be second down and five. Warfield making the stop for Nebraska. Sir Spiller. The throw was back toward the post. Fourth down coming up against McBride's defense. Good coverage that time by Walker again. Yeah, another one of those true freshmen. 
Although at this point of the season, there are no true freshmen out there. 12th game of the year, and number 25, Joe Walker, is going to make this play on Dan Campbell. Ball control drive for the Huskers coming up when we return. My hands were steady, my eyes were clear and bright. My walk had purpose, my steps were quick and light. And I held firm to what I felt was right, like a rock. I was strong as I could be, like a rock. Today's the day. Nothing ever got to me, like a rock. I was something to see, like a rock. It's that time of year. Happy holidays. From Chevy Truck. Let's see. It says here you're uh, blazing, highly unmotivated. You have a problem with authority. Yeah, I've got two references to prove that. Well, the only thing I can say is, you demand. You dumb For the great man. taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Technically, I can't give you a raise yet. You're right, Popsy Schmopsy. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. 6.43 to go here in San Antonio. Long day for the Aggies. Scott Frost, to see if he can bring down his clock a little bit for the Huskers. Put in Roman Green's hands, and he rushes to the 14-yard line. It's interesting here how Frazier performed when he won the national championship for the Huskers one of the times. And you can see Frost's numbers this year. Amazing that uh, Frazier had the edge in the passing yards. Tommy was good college passer, Dan. He didn't have that pro type on him, but he could throw. He could throw uh, very, very well. Frost puts it in Oman Green's hands out of bounds. At the 19-yard line, I asked Tom Osborne uh, how this team ranked with all the other great teams he's coached in his uh, years at Nebraska. He says this may be the most enjoyable team because he really doesn't ha hasn't had to do a lot of the uh, coaching and motivating, and his staff hasn't had to do that because of the senior leadership of players like Wistrom and and uh, Peter and Frost and Makavica, and uh, they take care of things. Aaron Taylor up front. They make sure the young guys uh, follow the Nebraska way, and it's been a very enjoyable year as far as Tom Osborne is concerned. First down, third and one. Well, Smith Barney remembers, and don't we all remember this? Third down. Cross to the middle. I talked to Scott Frost about this play just yesterday, and he said, you know, Dan, I did hit Shevin Wiggins right in the chest with that pass. <laughs> he was uh, kind of hoping that Wiggins would have made the catch on the first delivery. I think Wiggins should have selected uh, for our national soccer team over the French. Fumble! <laughs> A hot potato down there, folks. Nobody wanted it, and finally the Aggies come up with it. That was Flemons. He's a freshman from right here in San Antonio, Ronald Flemons. So there's a nice moment for the young man. Again, a lack of concentration by Amon Green. Fumbled last week against Colorado. He's fumbled twice today. This one, he doesn't get back. 
Randy McCown checks in at quarterback here for the Aggies with 526 to go. He's a sophomore from Jacksonville, Texas, 6'1, 212. His numbers. He'll get a chance now to put it up against this Husker defense from the shotgun. Low and incomplete. At one time, Stewart and McCown were splitting duties as the Aggie quarterback, and then the coaching staff made the decision to go with Stewart. He lit a fire under the team. Great comeback against Oklahoma State. And then they hit the wall here today against Nebraska. Second down and 10. Caught at the 25 yard line. Chris Cole. Everything's fine except for the fumbles, huh, Dan? Yeah, and remember one of those uh, controversial touchdowns back there, and was that the second quarter that you were all over, calling his knee out of bounds before he broke the plane? Tough day, though, for this guy, Brandon Stewart. Third down and three, and a little confusion there. They'll get it straight now. Sweeney and Sweeney still down with a shoulder injury. Great catch by Hardeman on the screen pass from McCown. He's just going to lower his head right into Sweeney's shoulder. Just shy of the 10 yard line for the Aggies. Other freshman, Texas, in that defensive backfield. McCown fires, dropped at the uh, two yard line, so it'll be second down. Cole let that one slip through his hands, eh? Peterson, the defender, number 11. The coach is using all their reserves now here as the time winds down on the championship game. flag and it's third down McCown's real lucky that number two Brandon Harrison didn't pick that one off it was a hook pattern out there to Leroy Hodge and Harrison uh, really as this one comes right at you breaks in front of the receiver number two right there and almost picked it off third down for McCown at the goal line, incomplete by Finley, Clint Finley. His daddy, a high school football coach. And he was turning around looking at that back judge, wondering if the flag was going to come out. Looked like a real good play as he took it away from Dan Campbell, knocked it away at the last minute. Another ball that could have been intercepted. Time out. The Aggies prior to their fourth and ten. So we'll take a break here from San Antonio and come right back. Hasn't been an issue for a long time. In a perfect world, broccoli would taste more like ice cream. In the real world, Diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. It's the taste you've been looking for. Before planning your next getaway, call Thrifty Car Rental at 1-800-4-CARS. We're right in your neighborhood with great rates on great cars. For a limited time, rent a compact car for only $29.95 a day. But at that price, they're going fast. 
So call Thrifty now at 1-800-4-CARS or your professional travel agent. It's quick, it's easy, and best of all, it's Thrifty. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, chilly, baby baby back, back. I want my baby back, chilly, baby back, real. Barbecue sauce. I want my baby back, chilly, baby back, real. I want my baby, chilly, baby back, real. Barbecue sauce. I got my baby back. Chili's grills like no place else. The new wizard. Can remove grout. Clean a golf club. Sharpen tools. Cut right through this screw. Soon your TV will have over 500 channels. Almost enough to show you everything the new wizard can do. The new wizard. Built by Black & Decker. Folks over here in the stands. Now you see if you've got a son or you've got a brother or sissy. That's Mr. McFarlane. That's Octavius' dad down there. Now. Look at, there's the Chris Brown family right there. See, now there's Zadisca, that's, that's Pops. He went to an Orange Bowl, so he's got that logo there. There's Mrs. Wistrom. Mom, is, you wear the name of your child on your jersey. And you're the rest of that's where you're doing. Fourth down now for the Aggies. McCown fires down, he catches in the end zone. Touchdown, A&M. A penalty flag. Holding against the Aggies, it's coming back. So hold on, everybody. No touchdown, and the parents down here in front of me are up cheering over that call. That's the kind of day it's been for R.C. Slocum and the A&M Aggies. Make a great play in the end zone by Aaron Oliver. It's all coming back. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty with two fourth down. Good job by McCown avoiding the uh, pressure here. Oh, Mrs. Wistrom said they were tackling my son when he was coming in. You got to throw the flag on that. I could see her up right down here in front of me. She was <laughs> yelling on that play. <laughs> out of the way, Mom. You know, the moms are, are only, you know, there's 22 guys out there, but moms are only yeah. looking at one. That's right, man. She's watching it get out in there now. She's <laughs> fourth down on the 25 yard line. Double team Wistrom through again and pressure from the other side this time they get 84 Mike Rucker and Rucker right here he's going to be a star next year he's got seven and a half sacks this year he didn't get the double team that Wistrom did he got the quarterback These moms and pops and brothers and sisters over here. It is a Nebraska family that supports Coach Tom Osborne and the Cornhuskers. Traveled all the road games. We've seen these families, Missouri and Boulder, Colorado. They go with the Cornhuskers wherever they go. Sims checks into the game. To the 37 yard line. If the Cornhuskers and the, all these families get ready to go down into the South Florida area. Sims on the carry. Who knows who they will wind up playing if form holds tonight and uh, Tennessee wins then Tennessee would be playing Nebraska it appears down in the Orange Bowl you got to hold on because if they are not impressive tonight who knows if Florida State can jump them Frankie London checks in as the Cornhusker quarterback and Correll Buckhalter is the running back fumble by the fullback and it's picked up by the Aggies Touchdown, Texas A&M. Jason Glenn, a freshman linebacker, scoops up the fumble and dashes into the end zone. <laughs> Willie Miller's number 15. He never quite gets his hand off from Frankie London. Ball goes all the way through his body. And there is Jason Glenn, number 23. And what a thrill for him. He's another one of those true freshmen, and he's got a memory. Frost first play out of the game, and his team gives up a touchdown. Frost was not happy about giving up that touchdown either. And, and just before, when Scott Frost came off the game, we had a shot of the families and the Nebraska fans on their feet giving Scott Frost a standing ovation for his uh, fine work today. Ladies and gentlemen, the minutes are winding down and we'll soon crown the new 
Well, let's take a break and uh, check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Well, guys, coming up, it's the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. A couple of great quarterbacks, although, Todd, do you think it could come down to the running game? I think this is why Tennessee has the edge. Jamal Lewis averages 112 yards a game. Auburn only 82 yards a game rushing as a team. It's all coming up right now. Back to you, Brent. Thank you very much. Three and a half minutes. To go here and, uh, you know, some more of our fine crew, we should check our technical director, Doug Schmidt. He slips off and does a little golf on us every now and then. But for the most part, Doug, he does pretty good with his fingers down there. You know, he keeps them honest down there in the truck. And, of course, our associate producer, great football fan, always nice to have him, Patrick McManus, as we watch the two-point conversion here for the Aggies. Picked off and knocked down. Wistrom was over there on the corner. Nothing doing. Our associate director, Russell Brooks. Our production manager, Beth Giuliani Gatto. And our technical operations manager, Jay Gleason. Assistants to the producer, Elizabeth Real, Brian Lockhart, and our spotter. Spotting hurt today, Brian Mobelson. Timeout, San Antonio. There's a medical emergency, but no hospital. What do you do? Build one. Leadership. Learn it now in the Army Reserve. Use it now in your career. Most low price computer ads include legal type, like this, to let you know about all the wonderful things you won't be getting with your computer. Now this system includes everything you need to get started. Printer, monitor, and software. It's only $14.99 plus shipping and tax. And best of all, it's from Gateway. Gateway computers feature Intel Pentium processors. Call us at 1-800-GATEWAY and we'll build one for you. You can keep your car looking clean, but you've got to keep your engine clean, too. Newly formulated Valvoline DuraBlend motor oil is a synthetic blend that suspends the dirt, unburned fuel, and water that cause harmful deposits and reduces oil burn-off. DuraBlend protects vital engine parts, so your engine runs cleaner and better longer. It outperforms all leading conventional motor oils because a car can look great. But it's what's inside that counts. Valvoline DuraBlend. In a perfect world, your cooking would taste more like your mom's. Woohoo! In the real world, Diet Dr. Pepper does taste more like regular Dr. Pepper. It's the taste you've been looking for. Well, the Aggies have made it respectable as far as the second half is concerned, outscoring the Cornhuskers, but it got out of hand on them early. And it was just too far. With Kyle Bryant, let's see if he can make another beautiful onside kick. This short of the 10 yard picked up by Brown on the run man and he took it on the fly didn't he did not hesitate stepped right in there says enough of that onside kick business remember Colorado hit one almost another one here today it was Texas A&M and the difference between Brown the way he played it and the way Bobby Newcomb played it is Brown didn't wait for it to go 10 yards he attacked the ball made the recovery on the fly and almost took it all the way in Gate and Sims are the running backs they are behind London the backup quarterback to the 13-yard line with 3.24 to go. Well, we bring down the curtain on the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Thanks, too, to our Red Hot man down there, Dave Hatter down there on the right side. He gets those commercials in for us. And we're going to be sending you on your way here soon. You'll want to see the start of the Tennessee-Auburn game. Straight ahead, McGate, junior fullback. And Nebraska tried to put one more touchdown up on the board to get that one back. There's too much Nebraska in that first half, Brent. Their first six possessions, three touchdowns, first three down, field Nebraska. goals. They had excellent field position throughout the first half, and they took advantage of it. Great win for Tom Osborne and the Cornhuskers. 
still unbeaten and headed to the Orange Bowl. Could be Tennessee, which would move Florida State three up for the Nokia Sugar Bowl, where they could be taking on Ohio State if that happens. Stopped at the five yard line, Jay Sims. Time down to 226 now. And of course, the Rose Bowl will match up Michigan against Washington State. And that apparently is the lone chance for Nebraska to win its third national championship in four years under Coach Osborne. Frost watching and hoping that his teammates can put six more up on the board. The gate again. So our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, no surprise here. Scott Frost, great day as the quarterback of the Corn Huskers, and that win, outstanding linebacker for Texas A&M, and Chevrolet donates one thousand dollars to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. A Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. What a fine young player he is. Yeah, and Scott Frost did it with his arm today, completing 12 out of 17 for 201 yards. Here's the third down for the Huskers. London going to keep that into the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. They put the capper on the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. A year ago, heartbreak. Fourth down and inches, the pass by James Brown to the tight end. Denied a chance for a national championship. A year later in San Antonio, Nebraska storms all over Texas A&M. Puts a big 50 up on the board. Tom Osborne now walks the extra point that could make this one 54 to 15. Ted Brett's lap. Will attempt this one, so they'll switch over and have a left-footed kicker. And it is good, which means our score: Nebraska 54, Texas A&M 15. So Nebraska, the champions in the Big 12. In about a minute, they're headed to the Orange Bowl. We'll keep you up to date on the score, but the SEC championship is coming up. That's in 37 seconds. You're watching ABC. I don't know, Doc. I live sports. I eat, drink, sleep sports. I'm at the games, interviewing players, coaches, fans, even mascots. I sleep on rocky sheets. I use an avalanche toothbrush. I even affectionately name my dog Nugget. I mean, is it possible to love sports too much? No. I think you're perfectly normal. <laughs> Tony Zarella, a well-adjusted fan of real sports on 7 News at 10. The Avalanche Alert with Mark Crawford. Sundays at 5.30 on 7 News. This is Championship Saturday on ABC Sports. From the heart of the South, the finale of ABC's Championship Saturday, matching two of the top quarterbacks in the country, their first SEC title game. I want to beat Auburn. I want to win. A, I want to win a championship and get an SEC ring. Peyton Manning, Tennessee's classy quarterback. When you watch him, you can hear the violin. I laid it on the line. I played hurt. And I'm off the field, I mentally got prepared. I take film home every day, and I put so much into this, into this team um, for this one game. Auburn's Damian Craig, the whirling dervish, the unpredictable wisp, the saber dance. It's a cold, glittering night in Atlanta, and the first time in the SEC title game, there are no Gators in the Georgia Dome. The moat has been forged by plainsmen and volunteers. The carriages have been arriving for two days. The ringing sound from Rocky Top and the defiant battle cry of War Damn Eagle echo across the city. There's a whole lot of orange in the Georgia Dome for the sixth SEC championship game. Presented by Dr.